Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death. Thank you so much for hydrating all my guests. Taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water. Love your brand. Love what you stand for. Love you give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co-founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. They have now blessed me with my own code. So if you go liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives. Welcome to the One Life One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morris. Today, Derek Green is not here. Derek Green is has left the country doing some uh, cool vocal training stuff in Paris. Shout out to Derek Green. But I got my brother from another mother, my little brother. I'm kind of your... Kind of like your dad. Yeah. Uh, I'm the same Little age brother, dad. dad. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Chappelle Lacey in the house. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Chappelle? What's up? Chappelle and Lacey. And then we've been talking for so long about this, the pandemic. My man's playing in like 100 different bands, killing it, touring, uh, living a couple hours away. Thank you for coming for the pod. Mr. Joey C. What's up? I call What's you Joey up? C. Of course you can. No, Joey no, that's C. fine. That's People fine. always call you that, right? That's, that's what I go by. Um, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate thanks you. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked. This has been long overdue. Oh, it, it has. has. Yeah, and I had to have Chappelle here deep dive Lacey because he's, he's, he's a fan of you as well. Yeah, oh, I'm man. Geek. I'm just a geek. And so I'm letting him, ner- I'll let him learn. <laughs> we him. all are, brother. Yeah. I'm it's all good. i out here and there on the podcast. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, fall in, I'll fall in line. Y'all, you fall in line. Do, so do, so Gardena, California. Gardena. Well, how far is that from here? Uh, it's a South Bay, so technically I think it's like, what, maybe 12 miles or something like that? 15 okay. Miles, yeah. I don't think um, I've been down there. There's been sh- there were shows down there growing up. It was like a scene out oh, there. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Okay. The barn. Oh, yeah, the barn. Know, I played that, there. That Torrance. Okay. You know, and right, off the, um, right off the 110 there. That that, that was like the th- Minor Threat played there. Dick, everybody hell, played there, damn. yo. And Did then you see there's Dancing there? Water. Yeah. And then Dancing Waters in San Pedro. Okay. Um, another, another place they played. Um, you know, the Minute Minute, everybody were from Pedro. Uh, Minutemen? Okay. Yeah, and you just said, you know, Milo was here, you said recently, and they're from Lamita, which is all, that's all like in Connected. that area. Yeah. So that's all South Bay. <clears throat> yeah, it's all yeah. South Bay. You know, Keith, Morris from uh, Hermosa. And that's right, Pennywise. Yeah, Pennywise. Wow, interesting. And then uh, Hudson, Greg. Red Cross? Yeah, yeah Red Cross. Mm-hmm. And that's where Greg Hudson's from South Bay too, Hawthorne. Wow, I didn't even know that, man. Yeah. Um, so how was it growing up there? I loved it, man. You know, it's like, it, it was... Uh, um, um, a great place because of the cultures that was like a real weird culture clash as far as like, you know, to the far West, you had all the beaches and right next door to me where I grew up in Gardena was like, you had Compton, you had Carson, oh, yeah. you had Torrance. So there's like all groups of walks of life, you know, different, you know, people from everywhere. Um, were just around and that, that's yeah. what I, that's what I grew up around, you know? So, um, it was, you know, it was awesome from, Little league to skate parks to shows to the bowling alleys. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know, and it, it's it. It was a great place, and I, 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 to this day, I tell everybody I I loved growing up there. Yeah, you, know? you have siblings. Uh, I have a, a younger brother, who is uh, a drummer. Yeah, well, he's yeah. He, that was your deep dive. Does. You told me that today. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, no, I just knew that. that yeah, was, yeah. He lives in Nashville know. now with his wife, and he has a lovely daughter. And I have a sister, um, who's on her own, and that's it. And I so, have, yeah. yeah. Who got into drums first? You or your brother? Well, my brother came late. My, bro- my brother came when I was 18 years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I, well, I guess I played first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to answer that question. Um, and is it true that like, you, your mom, got, your grandmother loaned you money to get your first drum kit or something? That's so funny you said. I, I It's so weird because driving here, I said... I wonder what he's going to ask me. And I said, let's see. <laughs> no, but I said to myself, I said, like, oh, let's see, Toby's probably, I bet he's going to ask me something about my grandma. And I started to rethink, and, you know, the whole story came back to me. And I, it was so rad because I remember the day I used to walk, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to say that I rehearsed this answer, <laughs> but I, you know, it all came back to me this morning when I was coming out here. And yeah. I was like, 
I used to, because I kind of started playing drums late. Okay. And what happened was, I've told this story a million times. But not on this podcast. But not on this one, which is the only one. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, a neighbor had a drum set, and I went over his house one day, started messing around, and, you know, it just kind of weirdly came natural to me. And I to remember his mom walking out and asking me if I played, and I said no, and she was like, oh, it sounds like you can play. Not having any kind of musical uh, background yeah. from my parents or anybody else other than just loving music. Uh, I just, I loved it immediately. Yeah. And then <clears throat> over the course of, I think within a summer or two, my neighbor moved. And so the drums moved too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't even think about it after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was back to playing little league and just having a normal life as a kid, you know, growing up in um, junior high. But I used to walk home past this little mini kind of hole in the wall uh, secondhand store that had okay. a drum set in the window. Nice. And it was a silver, it was like a silver wrap kit, little five piece kit, man. And it was, you know, it was, it was in great condition from what I could see because it just looked like it was sparkling and fireworks and just everything. I was like, <laughs> man, I just want that kit. And I used to just walk by it every day and yeah, just like stare a movie, at it. man. It's yeah. Like, that yeah. <clears throat> you know, and not knowing anything about it other than, them being drums and kind of what they were because of my neighbor having a kip. I just wanted it. And the more and more I wanted it, I just kept thinking about, okay, how can I get this kit other than maybe getting a paper route? I can't remember exactly how much it was. I think it was probably like, I'm going to say maybe 200 bucks, maybe a yeah, hundred bucks. Then. Oh yeah. I mean, it was so, and mind you, it was a lot for that kit too. Now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, I remember talking to my grandmother about it, my mom's mom, rest in peace. Uh, and I just was like, you know, I must have been really going into detail about how much I wanted this kit without asking her if she'd get it for yeah, me. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, because mind you, my grandmother had about 15 other grandkids. So, wow, you know, <clears throat> um, my mom came from a family of eight. So I she said, okay, well, here's what I'll do. I'll loan you the money if you want to get this kit. And I said, okay. She's like, you can figure out later how to pay me back, but if you want it, I'll loan you the money. And she did. Next thing I know, dude, I had this kit. It's amazing. Amazing. And I've been, you know, I was so grateful and I got a paper out as soon as I could to pay her back and this and that. And, you know, I did it. It, it was funny too. As soon as I paid her back, I just quit. I was like, oh, later, <laughs> no more paper. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do paper. But, I, you know, I did and got it done, paid her back. And sadly to say, I think the minute I quit the paper out, the drums just kind of fell apart as well. Wow. Yeah, you know, they just kind of just did, they, they took a beating and that was done. <laughs> yeah. But that was it though. From that point on, you know, I just, I wanted to play. And then another friend of mine loaned me a kid at that point and just progressively started, just kept messing around more and more. Playing, yeah. you know, playing covers with friends in the garage to the point where you cover misfits and black flag songs in some cover band, right? Well, that was when the, that was, that was came a little bit later. Okay. okay. okay so, you know, like, like I say, just playing, you know, Zeppelin songs and sound yeah, yeah, learning yeah. paranoid and all this kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, and then I slowly, you know, my life, it was weird because I always tell people, you know, as much as I enjoyed, I loved school, you know, I, I really did. I loved learning it, but I was so easily, and distracted. quickly distracted and bored, you know, mm -hmm. and it was, and my schools weren't great, you know, and I just, I had, my brain was like working like outwards towards the world, which I yeah. realized now, then I was just like, oh, I was just obsessed with, you know, reading about bands and, and staring at bands and ads and looking at yeah, drum sets like and then, you know, looking at the back of album covers and, you know, it's like, I was obsessed with that, you know, but I didn't realize what was happening, but I was just engulfed with music and every, yeah. you know, my mom and dad would have, you know, a George Benson record. And I'd, I'd get that thing and I'd just be, you know, this and that. And then it was like, there's cool. that. Anyway. So it was like, just music in general. I just wanted to be in it somehow. Yeah. You know, and I didn't quite know how because I didn't have any avenues, you know what I mean? Other than, you know, I had no one to really talk to about it because my parents didn't come from that and I didn't know anybody in this, you know, really, other than going through magazines and fanzines and looking through stuff and all that, you know, and figuring out like reading about what they did and all this kind of stuff, you know, but it wasn't till, you know, really, you know, punk rock, my introduction to that to when I really came in contact with other kids, you know, yeah. who, <clears throat> excuse me, like minded. And, yeah. They, they found this common ground with one another about 
literally starting from the ground yeah. and how you're going to DIY, you know, the, yeah. all that started yeah. to come into play and like how it was, oh, you could make things happen on your own. You know what I mean? And yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it all kind of began, you know? Yeah. Were you going to, did you start going to punk shows when you were in school? Yeah. My, when I was, it was funny because the first show I went to, which I, was, I know which one it is. <laughs> yeah. The X gear. It was X blasters and the gears and, and the gears. At the whiskey. And the whiskey. That's, Deep dive lacy. Yeah. That's so dope. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and the funny thing about that was this is before, you know, this is while I was in, I want to say I was in maybe eighth grade. So this Damn. is like seventy nine, eighty, probably, wow. maybe eighty. I would say eighty. But I went because I was again a girl who I was kind of my girlfriend, I guess at the time. You know, when you're seventh and eighth grade, whatever that means. Yeah. Her older sister was into music and stuff. And she was, I was like, you really, do you like that punk rock and all that kind of stuff and new wave and all this stuff? And I was like, yeah, you know, like I, yeah. And she's like, well, you want to go to a, you want to go to Hollywood? That's all she said. You want to go to Hollywood? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I, okay. And she's like, I'm going to, we're going to go to a show. We're going to go to the whiskey. And I was like, all right, cool. You know? So I remember snuck out of the house that night. Damn. Um, jumped in a car. Cause you know, I wasn't even driving yet. <laughs> not the Hollywood, not the whiskey. That's a big deal going to Hollywood too, right? Well, That's that was the thing too. And I was with these two older girls. So I, I just didn't, you know, I had, I had zero idea of what to expect, mm -hmm. what I was getting into or how I was going to feel yeah, or how it was going to make me feel because it's just like, you know, <clears throat> seeing, you know, friends playing in a garage or a band, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. That That's a, that's, that was all, those are the first steps of doing what it totally is about to happen to me yes. when I got yeah. to this gig, you know? So it was just like, Oh my God. It was number one. It was freakville. It was just, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It was all these older people, which in my mind, I just, they seem a couple older. years older. Yeah. 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 Um, but I got, I saw X, the blasters and the gears. And it was just like, this kind of spectrum of music that was happening in LA with this scene, you know, from X to, you know, just being the greatest, one of the greatest bands ever songs at all, um, players. And, and then you have the blasters who are this kind of Americana thing that yeah. are just, you know, and, and it's roots, but it's, and, but it's legit, you know, it's like, you yeah. know, it's not like, <clears throat> you know, there's no, there's no costumes that are going along with it. This is the real deal. These yeah. dudes are from yeah. Downey and they're just, they're killing it. You know, Bill Bateman on the drums who I became a friend later in life. And I just adore, he was a, such a great player. Um, but all this was happening and I was just like, my mind was blown. Yeah. And it was like, I knew right then and there that something just clicked inside. me. I didn't know quite what, yeah. but I knew something just changed in me. You know what I mean? And, um, I just, I just forever lived that night, you know, and it's like, it, it, it was the beginning, the beginning for me. <clears throat> and it just, again, opened another door to this thing. Um, this thing, music, which is so much, you know, which is the biggest, you know, it's, the, it's the real deal as far as I'm concerned for, for my sure, life yeah. and for the yeah. road. Yeah. Yep. My, my journey has always been mm -hmm. just, uh, driven by that. You know, yeah. I mean, going to your first show, I remember like just the smell, the energy, of course, being scared, the being room, nervous, you know, excited, just, you know, this, it, just the, the the volume, the the reaction of the people, yeah, um, not knowing what's gonna be, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's just it forever, like I say, it's forever changed me. You know, it's impacted me, comp you know, to this day. Yeah. I still get like yeah, worked up. You can tell. I'm yeah. just going. No, but it's true, I, I love it. You know, the passion, and the, you know, and that's the thing. It's like for me as a player. I don't mean, not to jump ahead of no, anything, but you know, um, my I think my playing and what I do and how you know, it's it's been my road to uh, it, it's it's driven by passion. You yes. know what I mean? And I always love what I'm doing, and I'm very grateful to be still doing it. You know, because um, I I've always read and I've heard with a lot of people, amazing people too. That's like when that goes away, it's it's usually kind of like you know, it's, it's not the best feeling and, or it's at the best, it's kind of a weird sign to what maybe, you know, it's, it's kind of, I guess, coming to an end in a yeah, way, you I know, for a lot that. of people, you know, yeah. It's yeah. Like, um, but I still geek out. I still love it. You know, it's like, even when I see younger bands, it's like, I'm like, Oh man, it's like, I get, I want to go There's practice. I want to go play, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, but, um, inspired. yeah. And so I learned that. Um, and I felt that from that very first show that, 
this passion that I have and love, I'm gonna have to figure it out because it's not gonna be it's not gonna be just handed to me, you know. Like yeah. Somehow I managed to get here at the show tonight at the whiskey that night and this that and, and from <laughs> that day on, dude, it just just kept going, you know. And it's yeah. And why do you think you chose drums or they chose you? What? Um, I can honestly tell you the drums chose me. Okay. Without a doubt, mm-hmm. um, my mom and dad have always said, you know, it. They knew right out the gate that I, it was. I was immediately you know Banging i know i know every, a lot of people say that too you yeah, know I mean, you know your boy is yeah, saying it's like yeah tapping it's, but rhythmically i always knew sorry to keep okay that. um rhythmically i just always felt really comfortable and like i just had that that rhythm thing yeah naturally in and, school you know, probably too on your yeah. desk con- i mean i'm being told to shut up all the <laughs> yeah. time you know? it's like, stop, you know, stop tapping on the table the stop energy. tapping your feet stop this you know and exactly yeah and <clears throat> you know i just um the drums just always, you know, like I say, they chose me, you know. Yeah. And so at that point on, you're like, when I get out of school, graduate, I'm going to be a musician. And was that like your. Well, yeah, I, I, I didn't graduate because I didn't finish school, mm. you know, and that's where it was weird for me in a sense, because I. I had a discussion with one of my teachers one time, I remember, and it was weird because he had said to me, he's and he was he was so cool man his name was mr sweat he was mr he was, sweat yeah. <laughs> keith sweat he, yeah. he was like i said he was one of the downest people i ever met and yeah. i remember he pulled me aside one time he knew what i was all about too <laughs> you know and he was uh he just was like man you know joey whatever you're gonna end up doing i can tell you that the passion that you have for music and all these things that if you direct that to that, you're gonna go far. And wow. uh, and, and, he, and he meant and I, and like he said too, he goes, I don't mean far, just you, you know, rich and famous far, because yeah. that's clearly not who I am. But he just said, you're gonna do what you want to do, if you stick to what you believe, and if you just that passion keeps yeah. burning, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. He goes, because I can see that you have this thing inside you, and he goes. Because you don't apply it to school. <laughs> he goes, you apply it to everything else. But that's an amazing thing for a teacher to say. And totally. that's the you thing. Know. And that's what I, you know, and I have to say, you know, it's like I never forget that because um, he didn't get me at all. You know, this kind of a punk. He just he used to always say like, ah, you know, I don't get it, you know, but. But you're on this. Yeah, with the passion. He was. He was a shit man. He was. He was. A, he was a great man. I have to say. And if you're out there still, I was uh, going to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Sweat, if you're like, if you're a subscriber to this podcast <laughs> yeah. right now, yeah. shout you out. So what do you like? I say. Isn't you know, it amazing? You still remember that? Like, yeah. some one thing somebody says to you like that when you're yeah. young. It's like, yeah, it's and pretty he, amazing. And, and he, like I say, he, it, 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 um, it stuck with me. Yeah, you know, and and I don't even know if I knew it then like I do now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, well, what's cool is that like he he understood your passion mm-hmm. and didn't take that the thing that you had a passion for was a negative thing, right? You know, like yeah. he was like, oh, this is a positive thing for him. Yeah, you know, so not that, speaking yeah. for him, but like you know, based off what you what you yeah. just said, it seemed like he yeah. really understand it in a positive it, way for you. And that's the thing. It's because I remember too. You know. I loved I loved baseball a lot when I was a kid too. I played little league and all this kind of stuff, and you know I, I just I I had a big passion for it as well. Yeah. Going to games and what position? Baseball card. I I played catcher and I played second base. Nice. I occasionally played outfield, and I I was just telling somebody this story the other day. It's like I had a pretty good arm, and they desperately wanted me to pitch, but it was wildly out of control dude i could not <laughs> throw straight and save my life bro. and i it was like it was it was funny because later in life and i was still going to school the high school coaches at my school were tight with my girlfriend at the time who was a few years older than me who was already out of school they really wanted me to play ball and i was just like i knew mm. you know at that point i i knew there was no way i was ever going to play ball you know yeah. what i mean it's like it, i didn't i was done with it you know yeah. it's like but I, again, like I said, my passion was music and I wasn't sure how I was going to go about it, but I was still going to try somehow to figure out a way to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's awesome. And, and that's kind of, like I say, it just kind of happened. I went, like I said, I, sadly, I didn't finish school. Um, you dropped out as a senior or a, for, Yeah, uh, well, I tried, junior. you know, I tried to go back, 
Yeah, well, no, no, not try to go back. I just kind of stopped going, which was not cool, you know, because I know I put my parents through. I have a, my parents were really young, you know. My my mom was sixteen, my dad was nineteen when they wow. had. Wow. Oh. So okay, you know, I I know, and they were amazingly supportive, and they were just so great. My parents, my and they still are, you know. Yeah. I still have a great relationship with my parents, and they're they're just awesome people. Um, but I know they had to kind. I know it wasn't cool. You know, I'd be ditching and, you know. Especially uh, being a parent now, you think about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I say it's like, I'm not, it's not anything like I, I wasn't stoked to say that I didn't finish school. Yeah. But, but I mean, but I kind of, I made it work because I did do this thing with myself where, and it's weird because I know you probably know this. For me with music and with punk rock, it introduced me to a lot of different books and people and mm-hmm. things. And I, you know what I mean? It's like, so it, I became kind of you know weirdly I, I i managed to make things to keep learning what i felt like i needed to learn in life and yeah. i was open to you know like you know i mean obviously you know traveling the yeah. world teaches you a lot of different things totally and, man you know people that you know it's like and and music did that for me those opportunities for mm. came along all through music for me yeah you know and it's like your uh, college. It's like just it, seeing the world and stuff. And the yeah, and it's like you know. And I would, like I said, that it's something that I would never say to anybody. Like it's wise to do, but it worked for me. You know, mm-hmm. it, it it worked for me. And it's like, and um, like I say, it's it, it was tough. It was it was tough on my folks, and I, and I I feel bad about that. You know, but but it wasn't. I didn't really. I mean, I wasn't going to jail and doing stupid shit like that. Yeah. I just like they were just. I could, I know there was a point when they were just really saying, you know, just finish, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, in my brain, I knew like there was really nothing left in pup in, in that in, for me in school. Yeah. Like I didn't really have many friends at school anymore. A lot mm-hmm. of my friends were older. I was going to ask you that older kids. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and a lot of them were from different, you know, different areas and that's, and that's where we all kind of, I, you know, this kind of thing came together. What were you doing all day? Just skating and shit, hanging out? Um, yeah, cause I skated a bit, you know, it's like I, all of us did, you know, there was, you know, I, I'd, I'd go to friends' houses and yeah. just honestly, you know, drink beer and listen to music or yeah. hitchhike, try to get to take a bus to Hollywood. Wow. Well, you know, do stupid, you know, it's not stupid. <laughs> take it's just kid shit. Just kid stuff. Um, but it introduced me to so many friends and people that were out of heat from the, you know, from the Valley. A whole different from Hollywood. world, man. Yeah. And it's like, and, and it was, a. Uh, it was a, a real uh, eye opener, you know, yeah. for me, you know, because I kind of knew like, I wasn't just going to stay, you know, in my hometown and, and get married and have kids. If that wasn't, yeah. that wasn't, it wasn't not, any cards. Yeah. It just wasn't in the cards. And it, I, I, I kind of knew that, you know what I mean? So I wanted to see and do more, you know? Yeah, so nothing w- against that. Was your first band Wasted Youth or was there another band before? That, that? was the first band that I wow. got in. Wow. And, toured and you know made a record with and, and how old you know then? i was 17 like 85 amazing, yeah man. and then you know played cbs you know and i was 19 you know and it, i've seen ways in, in the east coast before yeah before, we did sure. we did cbs and you know we did a matinee and you know that it was in, that was in the fall of 85 i think wow. we finished that and that's where you know yeah, that's why I, I met you know met Gestapo and everybody Jesus. and you know J- and Todd and you know Blood Clot was at the show. I found a note, literally a note from Blood Clot <laughs> on the back of the flyer. From uh, I should have wow. brought it. I should have brought it. So cool. Was like yo man, meet me. And we're gonna go get some food. <laughs> <laughs> Took me to the temple. No <laughs> phones back then. No that shit. No, man. no. <laughs> wow. So Went and grabbed some food at the temple. I was like, man, I want some pizza. <laughs> he said, took me to the temple. <laughs> so seventeen, going to New York for your first time, going to CBS, all that. Yeah, that's yeah, bad. That's amazing. 18, you know and it was like toured uh across the u.s and it was one of those crazy tours you know it's like oh sat on the and we had a makeshift van an air, <laughs> airport shuttle bus that we turned into a touring van you know that's and, like another state of mind type shit yeah it was fun it was, yeah. it was it was it was so great my dad was helping us make beds in there and all oh, so he was of, supportive of this whole oh mission. yeah 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 <clears throat> so we, we boned out and we started our journey and we, we opened you know we did book the thing ourselves and we you know Opened for you know played with Discharge of Portland at Satyricon and then played with oh. Wendy O and you know opened her band. I forgot like 
North Carolina somewhere, Windy, South oh, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Wow. And then, you know, we did circle jerks in Ohio and all these different things. And then we got to, Damn. you know, the out, uh, out, outhouse in uh, Kansas Our, City. At, I was talking about that the other day. Yeah. Crazy venue in the middle of the there, fields. Yeah, in the fields. Again, the cornfields. Yeah. You know, did that. And, you know, we played. It was just like it was rad. We got to New York. And it was funny because I, I from what I can remember, we had, we did, we did the matinee. I think the matinee might have been the first show that we did in New York. And then we had a few, two or three shows lined up with the adolescents. But wow. the adolescents had a big falling out with Chris Williamson. Oh, Chris and, Williamson. And he pulled the plug Rock on Hotel. their shows. Damn. And we were stuck with no shows. And we remember we were stuck in New York for like a week. Wow. Um, just living in In 85? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Down Lower East Side. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Wow. Lower East Side. L-E-S. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that's you know, amazing. St. Mark's just hanging out. Yeah. Todd. Todd was, living, Todd was with me every day. That's where me and Todd were, you know, we got, we, we became super close. And That's cool. Man. Smoking, we, and I remember we were smoking. We had HR was around, um, and he played us eye against eye on a cassette for us before just before it dropped. Damn. And we were like, we were all tripping out. And Todd was, you know, it was Todd was, uh, you know, like I said, I was I was with Todd every day at that point. That's you know? so and, cool, man. Um, Gestapo was still working the pyramid, yeah, yeah and, and it was all. But you're yeah. supposed to be a senior <clears throat> at that point, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be in school. So you then, know? It, like. You know, because I know you said your, your your parents were a little bummed about you not graduating, but like you know, with you going on this tour, yeah, you know, it's amazing. It, like, did did things kind of ease up, and you know, they were yeah, happy. because you know, I got to be like, you know, I I did, had you know, pay phone calls to them all, you know, they they you know, they would wire me twenty five bucks here and there, so I can keep the car, you know, they can keep the phone bill coming in, you know, yeah. it's like, but no, it did, it, it you know, it for me, that's what really. It you know I I left I left one person and came back another you know awesome. and that's the thing really is, grew up out there yeah bro. of course yeah. because it's a, and, and it also at the same time here I was with my buddies you know in the band and all that it it kind of it separated who was going to do what at that point as well for all who of could us. hang on tour too and who, who was going to continue it. on yeah and who wasn't yeah and you know and I didn't know I didn't know like again there was no plan I just I left. And I kept the journal. I kept a, a journal for about the first half of it, you know. Wow. And I think it was just under two months the run. I think it was just under, you know. And a lot of it was canceled shows and makeup shows here, and yeah. played a basement in Chicago, and you know, I'm. It, it was just like it was real random at one point because we booked it up to a certain point, and then we like we're working our way back, you know. Hey, you meet and people, it, you play their houses, and that's you it. The connection. There was like a bunch of house shows we ended up doing, and. Um, Watch. but yeah, like I say, it's like, I left one kid, I left one way, one person came back, another person. And when I did, I also came back, um, just with now with this experience under my belt that I knew I loved and craved, you know, I wanted to yeah. play and I wanted to play shows where people were, they could see this, you know, cause being, being a part of the audience and watching these bands was also a part of it too, for me, totally. you know? And going to punk shows, especially as a kid, because it was the first time, you know, where you're close enough to it going like, man, I, I, I can see Chuck Biscuits playing drums right here. And yeah, and that's that is my guy that that's that's what I want to do, what he's doing, you know, or or watch or seeing spit, you know, mm-hmm. fear mm-hmm. close enough. I used to go. I used to go to a few um fear rehearsals when they were out in Van Nuys and I have I have I should have bought oh, I guess I remember bringing so all photos this stuff. From there. Wow. photos of the rehearsal and just you know and and just watching spit you know he was one of the greatest drummers as well you know and Amazing. you know seeing all that like that that close it was something that you it you weren't going to get you know going to see you know kiss kiss or zeppelin in yeah. these big rooms it's like it, it just was unheard of it wasn't that thing yeah but so now going out and actually kind of experiencing that myself and then playing playing starting out this tour as this kind of a drummer and coming home this kind of a drummer you know what i mean it's like you're no longer this green yeah person who doesn't you know it's like now it's like okay man i did this and i felt this and you know the reaction of the crowd and, you know, meeting all these other people in other bands and, you know, you know staying friends with people and writing letters. And, yeah. You know, it's like it all, it all, it all fell into place like that mm-hmm. by going out and doing it, you know. And doing, yeah, it's such <clears throat> a crazy community of people you meet along the way. 
You know what I mean? Just yeah. like word of mouth was like no internet. This is flyers, like you said, fanzines or maximum rock and roll. Or That's it. Flip just, side. It was, yeah. you know, it's like all these things and all these people, you know, uh, were all pretty closely knit, you know, and yeah. there was this, you know, there was this so called kind of blueprint in a way, you know, by bands like Flag and all these people who laid out this, mm-hmm. you know, who were in the first touring bands, you know, punk rock bands, hardcore bands. For sure. They did it this way. Okay, so we're gonna go do it that way. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> so then and more and more people got involved and it was rad. Yeah, I heard there was like a handful of people you reach out to in different states. The they were out. the ones that call. That's right. They booked the shows in those towns. That's right. They weren't promoters with his kids. Yeah. They play a basement or a backyard. Yeah. It was funny because I was like going through my journal. We got to Boston and literally just from walking down the street, like Oh yeah, that guy's he looks like a punk and it was it was John Socks from the FU's. Wow. First person I met ever, you know, and it was like in Boston. Yeah. And it was like and he was like, Yeah, you know, he kinda showed us around and go eat here, and there's a vegetarian restaurant here, there's a coffee <laughs> shop over here, there's a laundromat over there, you know, and he, he showed us what, you know, and That's it was amazing. And it was man. rad, you know, but but you could you know, I think I would think by I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm I, do kids still do that? I would think, you know, it's like they probably have still some kind of um you know, network, I guess, sure. you know? Yeah, For you know? Sure. There's so, some DIY <clears throat> shit going on, but it's easy. The internet just... Yeah. Yeah, people. yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, there wasn't even cell phones then, so we were using pay phones then, you know, know still. Dude. And, you know, it was wild. You Did know? you have those pay phone dialers back then, those scams you could get at Radio Shack? It sounded like... <laughs> yeah. It sounded like coins. So yeah. Wait, what? So you could get this I thing remember Radio that. Shack, you could buy it from people, uh-huh. and it just sounds like you're putting coins in, in, a, in a phone. And sometimes the operator go, excuse me, sir, please try using, using real money. But, oh, my God, they're watching us. It was, just, it was a dialer. Yeah. It was called like a dialer. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. on tour <laughs> to make long-distance phone calls. They're watching us. <laughs> I don't know. You're freaking out. Like, they knew it was a scam, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was do shit. remember those. Those were wild. Like, yeah, like using phones in venues in Europe. And then, like, the promoter would be like, hey, some Americans had used the phone today calling America, calling your loved ones, using, like, the phones in their offices. There was no way to contact oh, yeah. people, man. Mm-mm. It was Damn. so crazy, but yeah, it was so crazy you back guys then. Just out, yeah, you guys are just out there. Yeah. Just yeah. dropping dimes. Do you, do you still have your journal? Low, low, low. Yeah, I do. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, I, still, I found, I recently found, you know, a bunch of flyers and stuff I had from when I was a kid and that, you know, and... Um, Punk Rock my Museum. Dr- oh, yeah. I mean, I had, and you know, the bummer part about this, I have to say, is <clears throat> in 05, when I bought my first house in Silver Lake, I had a fire, oh, which, shit. of course... Yeah, I lost a big part of my record collection, and which I had never taken from my parents' house my entire life until I bought my first house, right? And I had a fire. I lost the first minor threat. I lost the first oh necro. God, so I lost the first, you know, I lost. I, and crazy enough, I remember just real quick with that story. I remember what, when I got the call that you know, and I got home, and the fire department was there. There was a hole in my room. There was all this kind of crazy. You're stuff. like, where's my records? <laughs> no, there was a, there was the raddest fireman there. Who was like he? He figured I was in a band because I had, at the time I had a bunch of gold records and stuff. The Queens had just got off oh, off tour, and I literally got off from tour. I think maybe a week. But I remember the fireman going, "Dude, I tried to save as much as I could," and he literally had grabbed so much of my vinyl wow. and put it into one one part of my house. A lot That's of amazing. Soaked, but I lost so much valuable stuff, dude. It was like. Uh, it, it's painful to me to even still talk about it because I, 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 I dig in my threat for I still, Oh, dude, all of it. Minor threat, necros, uh, teen idols, a uh, lot of a lot of black. Oh, just so much stuff, you know. Yeah. Bad brains pay to come seven inch, you know. Damn. Yeah. But anyways. you saw minor threat. Yeah, all those bands, man. It was a good time. So you experienced that in real life. That's that's even more that's valuable than insane. the fucking the record. Well, that's I mean, amazing. and that's the thing. I look now and I'm going like those those memories of all that stuff and. You know, or obviously they're never going to go away. You know what I mean? It's like so, but but yeah, it's like but having you know, I found my journal, like I said recently. Yeah. And there's a lot of cool stuff in there, man. Like that, that I didn't remember, you know, and or that it just I didn't recall, or they weren't quite what I remembered. And I'm like, oh man, it was like we were we were out there for a minute, you know. <laughs> it's like you know, really two months or something, right? Yeah. yeah but but just like kind of, just kind of you know. Just doing it. But that's know? a long time away from your parents. You're 17. You're on the road with some 18, adults. 18, yeah. Because that was yeah. the thing. I know that I wasn't tw- I wasn't old enough to be in the 21 and over clubs that we play. Because I had to sit outside a lot of the clubs and wait until it was time to play. <laughs> so I was, I was I might have been 18 or 19. I wasn't Holy 17. Shit. So I might have 18 or 19. But, but you're far away from your family. And yeah. Shit, like, it was like, you know... Um, but it was the best experience, man. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was the real deal. 
Mm-hmm. And it was a real deal. And when you come home, your parents like proud, like oh my god, to the new. Yeah, you know, it came, but it was weird. Like it's like I came home and I, I came home and the band kind of. I think we kind of broke up. I think can't even remember. It was like <laughs> yeah, it's like we can't. We we just kind of you know broke up and then we kind of regrouped a little bit later. But, um, yeah, yeah, just kind of. I remember I got a job driving a, a van at the airport with my buddy, another punker buddy of mine. Wow. It was like you were just you know just kind of figuring it out, you know, and, um, um. And, you know, and, and weirdly just music, just, it always, it always just kind of stayed in my, Life. my, my, yeah. my journey. It's like, it just kept different I, opportunities. Yeah. Because I wasn't and... a person, I have to be honest, you know, I got, I've said this before. I wasn't a person who was chasing mm. like success to be in a band. The like I wasn't, gig, yeah. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going and trying mm-hmm. to figure out who's looking for a drummer. Like I, I was, I was playing with my friends all the time, you know, and yeah. it was like, and then if I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I just kind of, I just kind of weirdly, it kind of, right dictated, place, right time. What is people, it, you, yeah. Yeah. It just kind of dictated uh, me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, it's weird. And I, I don't mean it in a, like I didn't have a, I wasn't, I didn't, it was have your passion. Drive. But you weren't like trying yeah. to audition. I was going, going to, band. I was still very, excited about going to shows and seeing yeah. bands and, yeah, this and doing all that it. i didn't have to always be doing it you know it's like mm. i wanted i still loved every part of it whether it was a fan or whether i was playing it you know so, so you mentioned like not not chasing it but it always just kind of like stayed with you do you think that is due to your um to how much talent you have for playing the drums no i don't you know uh, like they, like not and not not that you personally are like yeah I'm talented at the drums anybody take me but but like personality you know too, though. your personality and, and also like I think there, there's just this thing of like when when you you just play and you just have this strong passion for it right and people just see that and they're like Joey C. well see I never knew that I never and, and like I, and that's what mm. I found out in this journal because I wrote about <laughs> it a couple times wow I never knew people saw that in me. That's I just amazing. love to play. Yeah, you know, even when I went when I went and uh, auditioned for Wasted Youth, my buddies, my buddies were the ones that's like, dude, you got to go try out for Wasted Youth, you know. And I, my buddies, you know, guitar player who's, you know, a good friend of mine still, Chet. Um, he, you know, I knew the band, I and I worshipped the band, but okay. I didn't know, you know, I'd see him around at show, at, at, you know, at shows, and kind of knew him that way. But I never thought of trying out for them. When they yeah. were, even when they were looking for a drummer, my buddies kind of made it happen. And so I didn't really kind of even, I wasn't really up on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I wasn't really like going like, why well, I, I, I'm, I, I want to be a drummer. I'm like, I can do it. Yeah. I just was like, oh, okay. You know, and they yeah. learn, learn these songs. And I was like, and I literally, I think I learned like three, four songs, which I kind of knew anyways, because I listened to that record <laughs> Reagan's in from top to bottom. Yeah. My, you know, forever. But, I remember just going like, okay, yeah, I'll check it out, you know, but I wasn't even like, I didn't really even consider myself like a drummer. Yeah. You uh-huh. know what I mean? I love the drums. I wasn't trying to be a, I wasn't trying to be a drummer. I just love the drums. Yeah. But that's, I wasn't because, like I say, it wasn't because I didn't think like that. I just was playing the drums and that's yeah. what it, I, I could play a song or I could learn a song or I could play with my buddies. It's like, and that was good enough for me. Yeah, was like, That's what was weird. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. good enough for me. Yeah, it's like I want, I want to be a professional drummer. That's what I want to be. Like, yeah, I want to no, be. that's what's amazing. Yeah, because I'm like when you say when, like you telling these stories, I'm like, oh, I bet people are just like, oh, Joey C. You well, know, like, it's it, it you know, kind like, of started. Guy, to, your skills drummer. spoke spoke for themselves. Yeah, yeah I, I, th- I think I think you know, and I hope still to this day, you know, because it wasn't like I I wasn't I didn't take lessons either. Wow. You know, it's like it just you know self taught. It was self-taught, and I was able to see so many great drummers. Like I said, like you know, seeing, you know, along the way early on. Yeah. You know, it was like, and I just I loved what I loved what they were doing, and I loved the music so much. I was always willing to give it a shot, like on my own. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna try this, you know. It's like, believe me, and a lot of it just didn't happen. But you know, <laughs> at the same time, you know, yeah. I was. I, I I could sit on the drums for hours. You know, I, yeah. could, I could do that as a kid. You know, I got arrested when I was like in for disturbing the peace playing. In, really? <laughs> yeah. Dude. Where were you playing? I was in the garage at my mom and dad's house. They arrested dude. your parents' house? Yes. The cops came. It was hilarious. Oh. Right after school, 
my buddy had my buddy had a drum set because my buddy was a drummer too. He had his drum set set up in my garage, and I came home after school one day and I'm playing them. And one of the neighbors was just pissed off, called the cops. The cops came, knocked on the garage door. I I thought it was just like when my friend saw me coming over. I saw it's two you know some cops. I'm like, oh, took me to jail, put me in jail for Holy disturbing shit. the peace, dude. Were your parents tripping? Oh, my my dad was so pissed. And it was funny because I, my dad was pissed because I had a Little League game that day. Oh, shit. <laughs> and he showed up at the police station just pissed, you know, just oh my raising God. all hell because I was going to miss a game. Shit. But he still made me go play. I was just like, I was thinking, okay, I don't have to go. Come on, we got to go to the game. So I drove him. But yeah, man, I literally, wow. I literally, you know, and it was, it still didn't deter me, dude. I just kept doing what I was doing, you know. Did your dad love that you played baseball, though? Yeah, my dad was a great baseball player too, mm. you know, and you know, but he, you know, he was, but my dad was great. He didn't, they, he didn't push anything Pressure, on me, yeah. you know, but he just knew, he just, he knew, he knew I loved it too, but he was all, you know, he was obviously there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm glad he did because I loved baseball as well. Yeah. But you know, like I said, you know, at the end of the day, I also knew I like, you know, the drums were what, what I loved, mm -hmm. you know, and he knew that. That's why it was like. They were just like whatever, but you know. But yeah. it was it was funny though. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I just thought wild. I just thought wasted youth is the exact opposite of youth of today. <laughs> well, that's you pretty know what much. I mean? yeah. yeah. I just thought about that right now. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. it supposed to be like that? Like we're going to be the opposite of like well, a straight I think edge it's, band? Well, no, because it was long before oh, no. straight edge. Mm -hmm. Wasted youth, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, oh, okay, minor threat days. Yeah, I mean minor threat was doing their thing, but I mean but before I, youth of today. But wasted youth clearly was not on the agenda of. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's like. Chad, the guitar player of Wasted Youth, is his brother is Lucky from the Circle Jerks. Ah, I so know that. okay, you know they're all from you know they they were from that first wave of you know Wasted Youth was kind of like almost an a it was weird, a gangrene too. Kind of uh, yeah, vibe. like a kind of yeah, right. You know, it's a, it wasn't the straight edge thing wasn't so dominant okay. as, uh, on the West Coast like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so I, choice, I yeah, I wasn't even like yeah, they, which was later. You know, yeah, well, Blast straight edge too. No, 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 okay, no, okay. no. Okay, Blast was dope band too. Yeah, though. it was fun. Mm -hmm. I love Blast. Blast thirteen, those great, bands. Dude, yeah. Um, right, so wait, you wasn't like a dis? Wasn't West Coast? No. Version of you? <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. This is that name that was just like crazy. Yeah. Were you guys a wild band? It was fun, man. It was a great yeah. band. They were the original band too. Was just such a great, great band. You know, it's like I was. You know. All the guys were great players, and it's just like, um, they just they were awesome, man. You yeah, know, great shows, wild shows. Yeah, wild shows. Yeah, I definitely seen on these things <clears throat> sometime. Yeah. I definitely saw you guys somewhere. Um, Maybe but, see. Um, yeah. So yeah, this this uh, I know you did Sugar Tooth, but also mm -hmm. this other band. Chronic halitosis is such a great, <laughs> it's such a great name because I know people who have halitosis. Well, it was Todd. That shit is gnarly. That shit is. No, gnarly. yeah, chronic halitosis, but it was a legit. It was a yeah. Because you was, got sugar tooth and then chronic halitosis. Yeah, which was simultaneously happening. For that's me. what I'm saying. If you have a sugar tooth, that could cause. It was me and Todd. Me and Todd youth. Wow. Yeah, it was a joke. You okay. know, it just it was a, it was a big Cover joke bands. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Flag but we then, played. We just did covers, and it was just like hilarious. And <laughs> Who anytime, came up with that name? Um, Todd. Wow. Todd and Todd and Lazy. Josh Lazy. Who was singing in there? I mean, nobody talks about Hollow That's a that's a real thing people it's have. It's like, oh, it's I, for I real. Cats that have it. You try to give them gum. Like, no, nah, I'm okay. Yeah. It's like, no, I want to give you gum. <laughs> Take the fucking gum. Yeah. That's a great name. So you guys played shows out here? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out there Dude, we actually actually we opened for the Boss Tones at the Palace. Wow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, really? yeah, it was hilarious. It was <laughs> us and I can't remember who else, but it was it was a, it was just comedy, dude. It was, um, and then you were also Chuck Biscuit's drum tech. No, I don't no, know that, where that came that's from. That's not true. Okay, no, because I thought uh, that was but, cool because you loved him. Well, I do, and I do still love him. But I have I have two of Chuck's kits, personal okay. kits. I knew that. Yeah, I saw that Fuck. too. But I'm just saying, I heard the drum tech. Thing. Yeah, somebody recently that asked dope, me that. Though. That would have been rad. Um. But yeah, somebody uh, somebody recently asked me that. But no, uh, I replaced Chuck and Danzig. Um, yeah. Danzig. But I do have two of his kits, you know. And like I said, you know, most people already know this, that, he, you know, him, you know, he's one of my favorite drummers. He is literally my he's favorite dope. drummer. You know, yeah. he's the great. He great he's in Social D, too. So great in Social D. We great, with them amazing was, in the Circle Jerks. He's amazing in yeah. Flag. Amazing in Flag. Come yeah. on, dude. It's like, Damn. you know, Chuck's the man, you know, and it's like, um, but Lucky, too. I love Lucky as well. Lucky was, he's such a, I mean, there were so many great punk drummers yeah. for me to 
really like spit was one of them from fear you know obviously chuck and lucky you know and robo, was like, robo. I, the, robo. Great. you know all those early guys were just like just the, just the sickest players you know yeah I mean? is it true you turned down suicidal and metallica no I don't, that's I, that's another thing it's like <laughs> that's like that weird wikipedia sh- who writes wikipedia i don't know, yeah. I don't know. It, anybody can go in there and write. i thought that I, was kind of ill I was it, like, damn. no dude i know and i'm always like what is that about dude yeah no absolutely but not. danzig that's a, that's a long time 10 years and that's amazing um almost i think it was like it was like eight seven or eight years mm-hmm. yeah. wow it Damn. was awesome it was fun and he was great you know I'm, i definitely saw you with him for sure i'm sure i mean he was doing the thing he was doing the misfit songs he was doing sam hain songs you in that one well that, oh, that might be when they a. when they did the first sam okay. hain reunion i was still in danzig because okay. the, okay. the tour and todd was playing guitar okay um todd youth this and, be todd, and uh me. so it was todd steve and london at that okay. point on that first reunion thing which was early I want to say maybe 2000, 2000 or 2001. Okay. Oh. You're right. I um, met Denzing only once. I was walking down St. Mark's with my wife and Todd used walking towards me with Danzig. And my husband was like, oh shit, it comes Todd. Oh shit, it's with Danzig. Yeah. <laughs> Not even look at him. I shook his hand for That was the only time I ever met him. It was just, it was very surreal. Yeah. Like just middle of the day on St. Mark's. Like, probably, yeah, that probably is. You think he only comes yeah. out at night or something. Yeah. You know I mean? But it's like middle of the day. I'm with those two. It's just like, he's it was awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. He's man. great, dude. I love Danzig. I'm sure I heard great things. Still you know great I mean? friends with him to this day. Yeah, oh, it must have been amazing. fun playing those songs too, man. Like, oh, dude, dude, it's you know, it's another 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 part of my life that I am absolutely just so grateful to have been a part of. You, you know, played like three records with them at least. Yeah, right? wow. yeah. Well, I came in like I say, I replaced Chuck. Yeah. In '95, I think it was mm-hmm. the fall of '95. Um, so it was still the original band, which is great. Wow. Still John and Erie and Glenn. So uh, that was. You know, it was it was it was it was huge. It was huge for me. You know, was it was there was it Mother on MTV at that point? Yeah, big time. Yeah, that's right, man. Big, the Massive. second it was the second like Round time. The, it yeah. was a live version of something. Yeah, or something. came out the, mm-hmm. the long, uh Demon Sweat uh, wow. Thrall. That's crazy. The first time really didn't get a lot of play. The second time it was just like fucking, Massive. So Massive. just playing that song, Massive. fuck man. Well, that was it. It was like when I got that gig, I literally went. You know, I got the gig. I've done. That weekend, and then I think I had a couple of days to do a in store and a show at the whiskey surprise show at the whiskey. Damn! And I think it was like two or three days. Yeah, I rehearsed, and then the, that next show was Irvine Meadows, sold out. Oh my so god, it was dude! Like, That's got to feel like such a big respect or just uh, good feels on your part for you know you to come after. Chuck Biscuits. Absolutely. You know. This kid is woke yeah. up. <laughs> yeah? I don't know, man. Good morning, brother. He had his wisdom teeth taken out last week, so oh. he's going to get him looked at today. Yeah. I know what that's like. Oh, you went to, you, you went out last night. Huh? What time did you get home? Four. All right, you're crazy, crazy. man. <laughs> Max is out there living 18 oh, yeah. year old on these streets, he's man. Right, go, to, go to the dentist, man. We're trying to do a podcast. Just go now. Go. Oh, yeah. Leave us alone. <laughs> we're doing a podcast. Oh, you just started? <laughs> no, no, we're talking. Leave us alone. Um, yeah, so Danzig, that's am- that's amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. It was fun. It was awesome. Ten years too. That's a long run. Yeah, that was your full time only gig. Yeah, uh, that okay. Well, that was my first real gig where you know full time musician on a bus. Yeah, well, yeah, well, Sugar Tooth kind of was too. Okay, Sugar Tooth got signed to Geffen, and oh, it began it began that like I was able to quit my job and focus on writing a record, and then you know we toured a you know and a lot we toured a lot actually. Um, but um, but yeah, the Danzig was like the first real taste of of you know a band on a bus, crew on another bus, you know, going heading to Europe, playing big festivals, um, you know, my own room. Yeah. <laughs> my own room. That's a game changer. Oh bro. yeah, dude, it's like it, you know it is, and it's like I learned real quick. You know, I had a tech. I, I what a tech? What's that? You know, it's just like you know, so. It, it was rad. It was fun. And it was, you know, and they made it, it. I, I had, you know, I had a great, great experience while I was in dancing, you know? Yeah. And he treated me well. Um, I have nothing ever really bad to say ever, you know, yeah. it, we, we had a great relationship too. And, um, it, it was, it was like I say, it was, it was, that was my first real taste, you know? Yeah. It was really This bad. might be Wikipedia lie. Guns and Roses audition. Um, there was a, not an audition. I went and played with them. They were doing a, they were doing a bunch of drummers who were coming in at us. Like I know Freeze was there okay. and Brain was there, and the one of the guys from, uh, one of the guys from, 
Pearl Jam was there. Oh, wow. And I and I think and then I came in and played for a couple of days. Um, but it, what it was 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 uh, from what I understand because I never even got the full story. Duff had called me and said, "Hey, you want to come?" play some drums for a couple of days you know you get paid at a studio or something at where at, they had a lockout way out in west la okay. that they had been in for a long time this um, wasn't rumbo mm-hmm. studios was it no 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 but i recorded at rumbo with me too oh did you during when they were doing chinese democracy right next okay to us. well that's what i think of, okay 2001 see, or see, danzig was managed by the same uh, managers of, G- of Guns N' Roses at ah. that time, Doug Goldstein, everybody. Okay. So I just went in and played for a bit. But what I think was happening, because it wasn't really, in, like I say, it wasn't ever called on. But ch- actually, I, I believe I could be wrong. Was he was trying to write Chinese democracy wow. at that time? So because I remember I had the science, I'm like, whatever you play in here could be possibly used or this and that. Wow. It was like some. It, to be honest, I don't even remember. I was, it, <laughs> I didn't know the just of it, like I said, because we had the same managers. Crazy, and they were like, hey, you want to go down? And the Duff Club, hey, yeah. you want to come in? I was like, yeah, well, you know, okay. You know, I don't, okay. So I just went in and did that. And that was kind of it. You wow. know, because I never left. It was while I was still in Danzig. I never bailed on, you know, I was in Danzig, yeah. you know, so. Um, That's interesting. Is that on Wikipedia too? Yeah, man. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. So it wasted you to Guns N' Roses. That's pretty, I mean, that's just, just, a, just that moment. Just something in your life that happened. I went jam. Well, it was just, you know, it was, I was actively playing now at this point in my life. You yeah. Know? Um, and with, with lots of different people. And it was, you know, I'm still, like I said, I'm yeah. th- thankfully still doing that. But absolutely, that's, that's kind of what um, opened the doors to knowing what it could lead to. And you're, and you're on these people's radar, which is amazing. You're just doing your thing. You're not looking for it. You're just playing passionately. Exactly true. You know, and, you know and, I mean? and it's like, and I, I think that's kind of why <clears throat> it's, it ended up how it has, you know, yeah. because from when I was in Danzig too, and it's, it's a super long story. I know many, I'm, I'm sure you've heard, but even when, when I went from Danzig to Queens, it was like, well, a call was made from a friend and I, you know, yeah, no audition. Yeah, I heard, yeah. Well, it was an audition, but it, it they, uh, my understanding was they had already found somebody mm. and my buddy hit me up who I ran into at a show in LA randomly and was like, Hey, did, did you get a call from, you know, the Queens guys or Josh or anybody? And I was like, no, I was, I was looking for, I was like, oh, I thought they already had a job because Grohl had already finished the record. Mm. He already finished uh, death. So then it kind of turned into this. I got a call and then Josh called me and then we kind of lined up this thing to come play. And then, it got canceled because Josh had a death in the family and I was, you know, the, their tour was getting ready to start and then yeah. it was off. And then like within a couple of days later, I got another call saying, dude, can you just come in? And it was like, <laughs> okay, but I didn't know anything because death, had, I never got the death, death had, hadn't been released yet. Wow. Um, had you met those guys before? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I knew okay. him from Kaya. Sugar Tooth played around with so, Kaya a little bit, you know, and, um, and I had just been out prior to them recording death. I I had been out with Goat Snake overseas opening Damn. for Queens on R. Wow. So I was that's how I was kind of yeah, back yeah, on yeah. their radar again now. Yeah. Um so anyways, when all that kind of jump ahead to the, the audition with Queens, you know, they called me and I was kind of like, you know, I kind of knew the guy who was telling people he got the gig, so I was like I was wasn't <laughs> sure what was happening and why you know and who <laughs> was gotta be awkward. you know well, yeah because it's like you know and it was only because i was just kind of like well you know i'm not really clear on what's going on here <laughs> yeah, but okay me. so i went in and played and it was on a weekend i remember sunday and they were supposed to be starting the tour the next day wow the promo tour which was going to be san francisco virgin Meg store amoeba la and then tower records in san diego wow record stores and they were debuting you know, stuff off death, you know, no one yeah. knows and all this kind of stuff. So I went in and played and then Josh was kind of like, uh, dude, we got to do this. And I was like, dude, what? <laughs> it tours, it starts tomorrow. So oh we, 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 you know, and it happened. It, it happened. Wow. And then that was, you know, 10, 11, 10, 11 years. Jesus. And what, how many songs did you have to learn? Well, that was the whole thing. I was supposed to be learning things. Oh, for the I ended up learning. The tour, you said the tour was the next day. <laughs> crazy. Well, yeah, I I rehearsed all Sunday into Sunday night, and then we jumped on a bus and went to Virgin Megastore and we put together like 
six seven songs oh my God. and then the medley of some of the news that i think it was like it was obviously no one knows with uh with uh songs for the dead we put them we had to put something together but then you know we did those three shows you know and yeah. then we came Jesus. back and cranked it for a couple of days and then tour tour was that stressful out. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it was a lot you know it That's thankfully lot, what man. i think the only benefit that i can say that for me at that point I was I was a huge Queens fan and I had a lot of I was pretty familiar with uh their older stuff. Yeah. You know, so the first record are um <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I was, you know, pretty like I say, pretty familiar with all yeah. that, you know. Um so that helped. Totally. And in, into jumping into the older stuff versus coming in and now learning a whole, you know, the whole deaf record which was brand new and it yeah. you know, and when I was technically or no, when I officially said, yeah, I was coming down for the audition, <laughs> the record never showed up. And when it did, it was a burned CD that I had gotten. Wow. And that record, if you know it, has all those commercials in between the songs. Yes. So it was one big one. I didn't know titles. I was like, I don't know where this song starts to that <laughs> oh, song. Yeah, so when we, that's we, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we had to kind of take a stab at the when I went in and played and until obviously. You know, I, I was got, 11 years in that band. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think it's just about 11 years, yeah. Right before that, though, something that's totally slept on, you worked on The Son of Sam. Ooh, yeah, that was fun. With Davey, AFI, and yeah. Todd Youth. Yeah. Have you heard that? I, I, it's you a, got it, me on it, one. It, it's, <laughs> like, it's like a gem. It's like, I think it's slept on, man. I think that project was slept on. It was. I mean, you know, Todd had that thing, man. Todd was so great. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was awesome. And then, you know, London and Z, uh, Steve Zing were also in that's there. That's right. We're all part man. of that as well. So, but the, the brainchild and the whole idea that started when me and Todd were still in dance together because mm. that's a thing too another lineup that was kind of slept on with dancing was me Todd and Howie oh yeah Howie Power it man. was so great it that's was funny. such a great lineup man and it was like because it really had that that punk root again that Glenn loved yeah. and where he's from obviously um but <clears throat> uh, it was it it was it, it was so awesome man it was wow. just it was great and it was kind of fast, you know, and yeah. it was, you know what I mean? It was like, it, it was fun, you know, it was like, it was so great, but yeah, that kind of led to the son of Sam thing. Yeah. And then, um, it was super cool. Yeah. So like I say, I, I, I had, I couldn't, couldn't stay fully committed to that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the Queens thing, you know, it was tough for me to, it, it was, a, you know, I, lo I loved Glenn and I loved Danzig as well, but yeah. it was a, now another, another step and yeah. another move forward and another, another world of music another you know totally. a, a great you yeah. know which was which was great and awesome for that i and i loved it because i was now exploring this other thing you know in its entirety completely because i kind of had a catalog and had a new thing and then i now was going to slowly become part of this new machine that the world was kind of yeah taking a aware becoming aware of you know it's crazy going like groups of different personalities into other groups that hold up in different yeah. personalities and yeah you being yourself and all those situations yeah because it worked you you're know, pretty universal yeah well i mean yeah. i like to think so yeah. <laughs> but i also don't i also know that there's a lot of things that i just am not capable of you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and, and, and that's i think that's being just honest with myself yeah you know? yeah um um but with that said, yeah, that was fun. It was it was the Queen's World and and uh, exploring that and going into it and watching it go from this to this was a, another really big part yeah, of my well, life and something I'm grateful man. for, you know. And what about playing with Scott Weiland? How was that? <clears throat> Scott was awesome too. You know, it was funny because uh, I knew Scott when I was in Sugartooth. Um, the Stone Temple Pilots were just great band, by the way. Were, yeah. Okay, now they no. their first tour as Stone Temple Pilots because they were Mighty Joe Young prior to that when they got mm. signed. They had a okay. different band name. So yeah. their first tour, oh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> their <it>. first tour <laughs> was with us, Sugar Tooth. Wow. And I and again, it's one of my another story. I'll repeat. Wow. Over and over again. <laughs> but, so they so people have heard you guys. It. No, no, no. We were opening for them. Okay. They were. They were. It was it was kind of already they they were they weren't established by any means okay. but it but it was brewing okay yeah. so like i and that's my point to what i was about to say is we started on the east coast started in florida and we're working our way back and it's one of those things where i <clears throat> all of us you could see what was happening 
because yeah. they were they were MTV darlings at the time too. So and like becoming this thing, but we were watching this band like they were in an RV, you know, <laughs> and they were and it's funny because Scott was like always just hit him. You know, he wanted to talk about punk rock all the time. He was, really? Yeah, yeah. He he was he was he was such a sweet. That's I love. Wow. I always had a really great, you know, a great kind of relationship with him and the guys in the band for the most you know the Stone Temple Pilot guys it was very mutual it was cool because it wasn't they hadn't quite become what they were about to become obviously yeah and and then with that said them doing that you know I I joined Danzig so my world my I I completely just split from that I didn't have much contact after that so with that with that said you know we were working our way back west and man they were it we were watching it just start to grow, you know, and they were fast. just turning into this thing fast, exactly. Because by the time we got home to the West Coast, you know, I I can all that they were straight headed to Letterman. They were on Damn. every MTV award show. They were just it was happening, you know, and it was happening big and fast. And that's crazy, I didn't man. I didn't really cross paths with Scott, uh, other than I ran into him maybe at Mates one time, um, while I was in Queens. And he he asked me if I wanted. He was getting ready to do a solo record with Albini, I think. Oh wow! And he was like, "Hey, would you maybe think about playing some drums?" And I was like, "Absolutely, I'd love to, man." You know, we we just Amazing. kind of were just. But my scheduling again with Queens Damn. just didn't allow it, so that didn't happen. And then so after you know my after my days came to an end with Queens, I had ran into his guitar player, I believe Jeremy, who passed away as well. That's right. Um. I can't remember where, but he said, Hey, you know, Scott's, you know, Scott's looking for a drummer and he was wanted me to hit you up about that. And, I, and mind you, I hadn't seen Scott since I think probably, like I said, you know, early, early, early days of yeah. Stone Temple Pilots. Right before the blue. And yeah. he had already been on to do uh, Velvet and everything else oh, and, and his right. solo projects. You yeah. know, he'd already done a, a bunch of stuff. Super <clears throat> talented, man. Yeah, he was great. You know, I love him, you know, and it's like, but I have to say, you know, it's like, at that point, you know, it was, it's, it's tough for me to even talk about because, uh, you know, I, I found him, um, you know, when we were out on the road. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and I didn't know that. Yeah. And it was weird because, um, that. yeah, oh, it, wow. it, it's something like, I wouldn't even say anything. I didn't know. No, no. It's like, you know, and I'm, and I, just would only say because you guys was, on the tour together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were oh, on the, we were wow. on tour together. We were coming, you know, working our way, but we were on tour, working our way back. In Michigan, uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. So or Minnesota. Sorry, I was right outside of Minneapolis. Wow. I think where we were because we were, um, had a day off when it all went down. But you know, he, um, you know, he had a lot of ideas and a lot of stuff he wanted to do. You know, still, yeah. and he was coming to. You know, really coming up with some great ideas of some stuff he wanted to do, and I was, you know, excuse me, I was gonna, you know, I told him, I said, yeah, you know, if I, I can help you out, and he had me reach out to a few people who he wanted to work with, and without hesitance, every single one of them said, yes, I absolutely want to do this. So he was super stoked, you know, with all yeah. these, and I was like, it just kind of being his at that moment, like, hey, this person said they're down, you know, and yeah. It was it was something that he was really excited about, and then sadly, you man. know. Wow, man! I didn't even know that you were there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was How still was playing he? with him. He it was already like four years okay. ago, I think. So mm-hmm. he would he was a year okay. younger than me. So he was like just fifty, maybe just fifty then. Wow, man! You know, That's crazy, man. I didn't know 50, that. 49, maybe forty nine. I can't I can't be sure now. I gotta remember. Um, was he back? Was he in and out of being sober? Or was it just up and down? You know, I don't. He wasn't, he wasn't like a program sober guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I don't know exactly what he did. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. He did his thing. I, I never really, um, got to, you know, questioning what it yeah. was, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it wasn't what a lot of people think, but you know, he had, he had some health issues, you know, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like. I think that's, um, you know, uh, over a long period of doing what he did back, you know, in the early days. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of just caught up. Be, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I think it had really had a lot. Most, most of what it had to do with, you know, just, yeah. um, 
but a yeah. super talented, sweet guy. I love him, man. And, uh, you know, I had a, you know, I tried to do the best. I, I just, I showed up for him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like it, yeah. You know, whatever he asked me to do, I, you know, I just gave it my all and I, you know what I mean? It's like, and that's all I could do. Yeah. You know, that's all yeah. I could do, you know? But <sighs> tough. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's, uh, again, I was, I was lucky to say that I was, you know, able to, to play with him, you play know, cause yeah. he's such a, yeah. such a legend. Yeah. He always came off like just so sweet. He just seemed like just something. You know, he guy. he always was with me. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I've I, I've I've heard horror stories. Just like yeah. I, you know, it's like I, I can Everybody honestly say, it. for the most Everybody. man, I do, I've 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 always saw the best sides of the people, for the most that I've worked with, and I'm I love that, and I and I'm grateful for that. You know, yeah. and I and I think I think it's because I always I try to keep it as real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with everybody, you know. 24 seven. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that's the punk rock in you and where you come yeah, from. That's what it's I, I think so. I, you know, I I, 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 you know, yes. it's like, it, I don't see the value or the, or the real like point in trying to be something I'm not yet. Tell others yeah. something that they just need to hear when we know that that may not, that's not real. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, but I, you've been in so many big bands, but you're so not Hollywood. You're so like just a um, punk rock guy. Yeah. I, I don't, there's very yeah, grounded. I, I try to be, I try to be, you know, and if, and I quickly, if I'm, if I'm slipping, anybody out there sees it, <laughs> you can come up and give me a smack. <laughs> <laughs> but I like everything comes full circle with you. So you have the Queen of Stone Age, you have all this stuff going on, massive, massive band. But then you come back and you're like, do a blood clot record. You're playing with the Bronx, you're playing with Circle Jerks. Like you're coming back to the more like, Core my roots stuff. it's yeah, my roots you know yeah. and, and here's the thing it's great like, record the blood clot record man. oh thank you man that was that John was a, Joseph, great record. yeah you. yeah todd it was it was a great good time um it was shortly lived which yeah, it was. i think we all knew <laughs> <laughs> we all knew that was probably going to no, be the case for sure but it's a great record though. you know it's 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 old old friends doing what we love yeah and, and it was probably fun to do that work it was Friday. great it was great i had the show you know the tour the one tour we did right, and everything you know it was uh with negative approach yes it was awesome but um <laughs> but yeah you know it's like it's something that you know it's it's for a punk rock kid or if you know yeah. and i don't like to just lump myself only into one thing I know. but it is but it is my you, core and it's mm -hmm. the root it's what got me started in doing what i do yeah, it's I like that. you know to be able to have done you know a lot of the things that i have and am still doing it, it that's really what i like to say i owe it all to you yeah. know and I have no problem saying that, you know, it's like, there's no ego going. That's like, Oh, it's just this, that. No, it's like, that's what it, it is. And that's what I'm yeah. about, you know? Yep. And it's like, um, I, I have been grateful to, to spread my wings and do other things, yeah, are, for sure. you know? <clears throat> and I, and I still to this day enjoy that. Um, but I also still, you know, I, after it all, it's like, now I'm, you know, I'm getting to do the circle jerks, which nuts, is incredible. Dude. And cause you I love flag and, growing up. Oh, absolutely. Sure flag, like the jerks. It's like those, you know, f f all those bands, minor threat fear. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it is the absolute epitome of what has, you know, motivated, inspired and taught me again, like I said, to do what I do now, Yeah, you know, and, um, and, and, and then go further. Cause all those, as we all know, those people and those musicians, they all have done so much more as well, For sure. you know? So, and, yeah. So we come back to that. Like that's seeing, right. seeing the Bronx is awesome. I love and, that band. Yeah. The Bronx are just so great. And I love playing with them too. A very, really creative, um, strong, just Cool like style, great vibe. bands. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's great, just, style. And great yeah. guys, yeah. all great guys, great players. You know, and I, I, I just, I, I couldn't ask for a, a better group of guys to be rocking with. You know, in both, both camps, the Circle Jerks and, yeah. and with the Bronx. You know, and um, I mean, I'm lucky. Sex, bro, yeah. playing that, a record that probably changed your life. <laughs> that's it. Dude. And I then, mean, like being at your age and coming around and playing with this. That's guys, right. It's must. Uh, that's right. Man. You know, it's like. It's got to be like surreal at first. It, it is. It is. And it's still, like I say, I, I'm still the excited, you know, 15 yeah. year old kid. And, you know. You're the youngest guy in the band? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? 55, wow. still the youngest guy in the band. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Oldest guy in the Bronx, youngest guy in the Circle Jerks. 
<laughs> but you've been touring hard through this whole thing, man. You just on yeah. tour of the Bronx and Rants and Dropkick. Yeah, kick. yeah. The circle Jerks <clears throat> playing everywhere, man. Yeah, it's been fun. You've been nonstop, like, man. I mean, it's, you know, gr- I, I, it's what I do, you I know? know, and it's like, it's in, and I mean it in the sense of, you know, I've, I'm lucky because I have an amazing wife who is say that. so three supportive, kids. three boys. Wow. That's what my mom had, three boys. Yeah. Three and, boys. And, yeah. and, and, and I have to say, you know, I've been the, the, you know, the pandemic, you know, the whole COVID lockdown thing, it really, for me was a great thing because I was home with my family. Yeah. I was home for my boys, you know, and I've, you know, I've been blessed to have, you know, three healthy boys who are my world and my, my wife's world. Yeah. And we get to spend, you know, I've been able to spend every day with them for the last two years, you know, and it's like, you know, and, um, and same with my dogs, you know, it's like, it's like my life, my family. It's like, it's, it's what I really am. It's my core and it's who I am. It's what I'm about. It's good balance at all. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's It's worked. It's somehow worked, you know? Yeah. Um, and even, even with, you know, just coming back when, you know, for this first beginning of work again, it's like, it's, it's kind of a slow kind of get back into the way things are going because it's definitely going to be different. It's definitely changed, but it works, you know, Mm -hmm. it definitely works. And I'm able to, you know, still be a big part of, you know, my, my, my family life. So have my family life. Yeah. Have an amazing wife being a musician is so, so lucky it's so important you know man. you know it's, it's to hold you down while you run around like a big kid and go on tour and have no responsibilities <laughs> talking like a sailor all day hanging out with your friends <laughs> telling yeah. stupid childish jokes <clears throat> yeah you know what i mean then you kind of yeah. then you, well you have three kids but even my wife just one she's like and then you come back from tour here here's your kid it's yeah. your turn now that's right you know and it's, it's crazy like balance. it's um and it's it, it really puts life i know for me as much as you know my music is, has always been my biggest thing and, you know, having kids and, you know, and a wife and it really puts everything into perspective to 100%. where to it, it just really reminds me of what matters most, you know, yeah. and there, you know, there's, uh, there's not a day that goes by that I sit there and go like, you know, what has happened? It's like, no, it's like, this is what <laughs> I have wanted to happen. You know, it's yeah. like, and this is where I want to be. And this is, you know, we're doing this together, me and my wife, and we've had, you know, so far it's been great. And it's, you know, it's, it's no walk in the park. Like anybody said, like, Three you know, kids is no joke. It's, man. it's, you know, it's, but we make it work. You know, yeah. there's nothing that ever gets in the way to where I can go like, no, nah, I, I, sorry, I can't, you know, it's like, no, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll make it work. You know, they always come first and, you know, and they, my, but my wife knows too. And then we've got to go to work. I got to support a family, yeah. but, but I'm not really ever, that far you know what i mean yeah, it, it's it's um you know it's facetime in every day and it's you know it's a lot of that when you thank, are you thank know whoever for facetime no it's a shit yeah. change you're on tour no shit um, have you kids seen you play before Obviously, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah uh my son cave the oldest he's he's already seen me with the hives he's yeah damn bro yeah damn. i sat in with the hives for a that. tour so he's yeah his first time you know, see the hives online man. <clears throat> they fix that yeah the hives that's amazing yeah yes. it was great it was so fun great great damn. band you know just great songs, great uh-huh. great people. I, I absolutely had a blast yeah, doing great it. Band. But my son saw me with the Bronx first in the UK, which was great because my wife's British, so we got to you know they get to go back and forth. That's dope. Then he saw me with Zach at you know Zach Watt doing mm-hmm. uh, at the at the forum, and uh, and then he's already seen me with. Did you see at the Circle Jerks? Yeah, I can't. No, he didn't make the Circle Jerks gig, but my youngest did. My youngest London did. Um, so yeah, they've they've been able to see me play, and they you know they've been, they've been able to, to come out and check it out so far. And, that's amazing. You know, yeah. Damn. That's uh, so. Is there any is there any one band you in that you're the most proud of, or accomplishment for you, or playing um, with somebody, or? I mean, really, you know, I don't ever. One thing I don't do, and I learned very early on that you know whether something is a success to me or to somebody else doesn't yeah. make a difference you know i mean not to somebody else that doesn't make a difference yeah it's what is a success to me right. and usually you know you know i've been really grateful to say that all the bands that i've played with um i've done by choice yeah and not had to do it because I needed to make a check to survive. To yeah. survive. It's like, so I really have, um, I really have a real 
satisfaction with everything I've done, yeah. you know, and it's like, and I really admire, I really love all the bands that I've been able to play. I do. And I yeah. still, you know, I, I still love when I, you know, everything that I've been able to do over the course of the years to where I don't compare them to one another because each one of them is so special in their own, you know, and, that's, I, that's and I don't know if that's, you know, some of you, you know, oh, that's corny or that's, sound. no, no it's but not. it's real. That's real. You know, it's, it's real. like I've, I've had nothing but great times for the most when I'm playing with mm-hmm. all of these different bands, you know, it's like there's been ups and downs. Yes. There's, yeah. you know, there's nothing is perfect as we all know, but I can literally say that I don't, I, I have, I have a lot of, appreciation for everything I've done with all the bands I've played with, you know, but yeah, you know, but right now, you know, my band, my, my band is, you know, the Bronx, you know, okay. and, and, and my band right now is, you know, is working with the circle jerks and touring with the circle jerks, okay. you know? So those, those two are, you know, something that I, I, I couldn't ask for really much so more, amazing. you know, yeah. cause they're both so great. Um, and then I had the luxury of still playing with Zach when I do wild, yeah. you know, and he's just, you know, he's amazing and I love him to death. And what I get to do with him is also just so great. But, you know, I look down the road and, you know, there's, there's a blast record coming up that we're getting ready to oh, work wow. on. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're doing a new sick. blast record and I love playing with that. Cause know. he was in blood clot, right? Uh, Nick was in blood clot okay, with me as well. Right. Yep. So we're getting, hopefully getting ready to do that soon. So you cool. know, so, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just like I say, man. I'm grateful to do it all, and I love, I love each one of them. You know, yeah, I really do. Uh, there's been, you know, as far as some people are concerned, zero accomplishments, with some, <laughs> and then multi accomplishments yeah. with others. But you, you know, so because you lived it, this is what you're doing. Yeah. And you know I just I mean? get to do it, man. You know, I wow. get to do it. You know, do you so. have any any regrets in your life? Um, I, I you know. I'm sure there are. Yeah, I have some regrets, you know. I, I mean, there's, I think, uh, the one thing I can only really say, and it's nothing, I think I regret a bit of maybe wasting time. That's why I really, mm-hmm. I can tell people, you know, now being this age that, you know. It's so important Don't time. waste the, the petty stuff in life. Yeah. At the end, of, it just, it it means nothing, Doesn't matter. Man, you know, and I know a lot of us get caught up, um, you know, myself included, you know, there's, there were periods where I got caught up in stuff that I thought was real or that I was just so engulfed with, with, you know, and it, it just, it meant nothing. Yeah. And, it, and if you can step away or out of the box for a second to, to, to understand that, but I know it really only, it comes with maturity, totally. you know, where you have to understand that time is something you're never going to get back. So true, man. You know, and so to waste it, just, you know, chasing pointless, like, you know, shit. And I don't mean dreams. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just getting caught up in things that just don't matter. Yeah. It's like, <clears throat> you're never going to get that back. Never. So the sooner you can, you know, let that kind of stuff go and start to move forward and continue to move forward. And that's what, you know, I've like, I know, you know, I've always tried to do, and I've had those moments where I'm stuck. Everybody has them, totally. but if you don't get out of them and see, you know, or learn from them, yeah, you're just going to end up right back there again. And, and and that's what I have have chosen to do in my life, not do anymore, is just to go back or get stuck in the same thing again. You know, mm. and I can, for the most, I can recognize that now. Yeah, miles away. And I don't even get upset or I don't just not let myself get when something goes not the way it's supposed to go or not the way I chose it to go. I can either accept it or I can move on and just continue to go yeah, forward. That. You know, if I, if you get stuck trying to figure too much of that out, you know, and I'm not saying don't figure things out, but yeah. those things that just don't matter in the big picture, that thing, that's what, that's what I regret. Those okay. kind of things back in the day that I couldn't let go for whatever reason back yeah. then, you know, I'm just like, ah, man, God, if I just only, and not because of, you know, I don't hold any kind of, um, grudges, resentment, resentment. or anything or grudges, yeah. or I don't have anything like that with anybody in my life. It's awesome. You know, I just don't. Yeah. Um, but I can easily just say, you know what? It's, it's, it just, it's gone. It's done. It's over with. 
and my life is about this now and I'm just going to keep trying to grow and be the best person possible and the most useful person that I can be to others, you know, yeah. and, and, and just being honest, you know, with myself and others. And, yeah. you know, that's how I try to live my life, you know, to this day. Yeah. You, know? you pretty much answer the next question. You optimist or pessimist. You seem like a positive person. Well, <laughs> I think a realist. No, no, no. Yeah. A realist in a sense, that's my wife but I think so. really, I think what it really has to be, for me, is a bit of both. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I have kids now, and I have, I like you, and like most, I don't know if you have kids, but we want the best, I just want to, I want the best I could ever be and give to my kids, regardless of whatever lies ahead. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, you just want the best for them. And <clears throat> I think if I, if I, was either or I probably wouldn't be able to do that completely, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so I think, of, I think being a bit of both and understanding that their dreams and child being a child is just amazing. When I see my yeah, kids man. and the stuff that they say and do and draw and ask, and I'm just going like, it, it's mind blowing. I know it man. is mind blowing. And it's just the most, we were like that once. Yes. And I, but it's, <laughs> it's hard to remember that. I know, but that's Innocence. what reminds I can. And I say that's me and my wife talk about that all the time. It's like, I've been reminded of so many things watching my boys grow and listening to them and talking to them and, you know, and just seeing the little things that they do or their interactions with other kids or other yeah. people. It's like, man, I can recall now, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not always the easiest, but in maybe not completely, but I can, I'm reminded. So yeah. that's why I say it's like, I'd like to think I'm a bit of both, you know, yeah, I uh, and that. just being, um, but obviously a realist is, is, is what <laughs> for me is, I guess the, the safest route. Yeah. yeah. It's my, my wife's <laughs> like that too. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it, it, but you, I think as a parent that you have to be both. No, you do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you have any daily rituals? You a coffee guy? Uh, Big time. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah big time. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody pretty much is when I ask them that. I know. Yeah. I can't wait to give but I, I didn't start drinking coffee until I stopped drinking, you know? Oh, okay. So that was like 22 years ago. Wow. So. over 22 years? Yeah. That's amazing. You know, man. You know it's like, wow. um. I just don't drink, you know, and it's not, it's, it's not about anything or, you know, or I just stopped. You know Stop I mean? cold turkey like that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. It just drugs and alcohol. It's just, you know, but I mean, I can honestly say that my life did, it took another turn when I stopped, when that happened. Yeah. You know, so, and it was for the good. Yeah. So, so coffee became your other thing. Yeah. Coffee's my thing. You know, I get up and. Uh, you know, my wife was just before I came out here today, you know, I was having my coffee at, you know, 6 a.m. And I got, Damn. you know, my two boys and our new, my new Boston sitting on me. She goes, is that, that's just how you enjoy your coffee, right? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, it, it is absolutely that's how I enjoy it. They, they gotta be, you know, I gotta be sitting here watching, you know, sitting there watching cartoons, whatever they're watching at that <laughs> yeah. moment. But, you know, it's what makes you know that's makes light. it all that's gratifying for, you know yeah. they get up it's, early, it's yeah. amazing oh yeah Dude. yeah <laughs> I, I sleep with my three my, my three-year-old uh he's soon to be four i usually sleep with him because our newborn came london um who's just about eight he's going to be seven months and 20th of this month you know he stays with mom so mom is obviously still breastfeeding all yeah. up. so so I don't disturb their ritual, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I got to do that. But, you know, so it's like, it just, it makes life a little bit easier for all of yeah. us. You know, everybody can kind of get, we can get our, you know, our days going pretty smoothly, you know, so. So just um, one coffee for you? No, usually two, <laughs> okay. but I, I don't, I don't do coffee after three or four. That's what my friend told me. Never do after that. You stay up all night if you yep. do that. Yeah, it's okay. It's mm. weird because I, I can do it. I can stay up all night. No problem. I think it's because of our our work, my work. Yeah, you know, my I, my body clock is kind of like that. But since our kids, I I get up, you know, whether I go to bed at twelve midnight or one a.m. two a.m., I wake up at six. So no matter what, even being on the road without them, Damn, I'm just like really sleep in on the bus. Or nothing? I just be yeah. I mean, wow. I'm just like still like fuck. 6 a.m. It's like I'm up, you know. Clock. I might be able to squeeze in an hour or two, a little bit longer, you know. But mm -hmm. um, it's crazy. We get older, we don't need as much sleep. Like my son sleeps like nine hours or nine or ten hours. I heard me get older, it's less sleep for us. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, it's just like I just. I, I mean, 
it just kind of works that way. And I'm okay. You know, I can feel yeah. myself. I'm okay. It's like, you know, I can still go do a gig and still play and I can, you know, get up and yeah, it just, it, but it know. is when you go to, we saw it to a show the other night, they didn't play till like 11. I'm like, wow, this is so late to see oh, a yeah. concert. When I'm out, if I'm not working, if I'm out at that hour, I'm like going. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. God, it I was get tough. home. I get. Yeah. I'm dying. You know, it's like my feet hurt, my knees hurt. It's Isn't there also this weird thing? <laughs> it's a weird thing of like when you're a parent and you have kids and responsibilities and you you touring for your living, and then you go home and you might want to go out one night and go see a band. I have this weird thing of like leaving the nest. Well, not now because Max is 18. Yeah, but like, you're gonna go see a show while your wife's home with the kids. I should be home the whole time I'm off tour. That's right. It you is. It's I mean? Well, it is. It's I, you know I have to come in. I drive in to, to for circle jerk rehearsals. Yeah, and it's usually two days. So I come in early. I'm sorry, I come in late for the first day, and then rehearse early the second day. So I spend the night to it's, get home. It's still weird. You know? One night away, right? But it's weird, you it's know, so because weird. originally I was just driving back every night after rehearsals because I just wow. didn't want to leave the kids you know I was like I was so but after but a while but then you're shot when you get home you're exhausted well it's just like yeah and it's like then it's like you know I was realizing by the time I got home because it's a couple hours hours to get back they'd be already in bed so I'd uh, miss I'd miss that last couple hours with them anyway so that's that time it just yeah miss, so now I switched it up stayed go back early the second night and I'm home for them home to for dinner and I'm home for you know put him down and yeah you know, we read and now my my oldest is like we're, he's he's on a puzzle kick now so we do puzzles every night nice. you know which is rad you know and so, what about the Bronx you balance the practicing in that too yeah the Bronx is just like we don't rehearse okay you know we we rehearse like a night before the it's wow. it's, it's hilarious it's always the same it's thing like sick, okay yeah we're gonna go in and do you know, a good two or three days and it's just like oh do you know because well that brad lives in uh brad lives in louisville the oh player, wow okay you know and joby lives in texas now so oh, now that. it's a you know we got all they got to fly in and do it all so now it's just like okay let's squeeze in a day and then a sound check yeah everybody does you know we try to do as much of our homework as we can you know, leading up to the for the last rehearsal or something. And well, you guys were, you were touring a lot, so you're on tour in that tour mode. Yeah, the Bronx is just a bit, it, the you know the Bronx is such it's a machine, man. It's like a and it's such a it's such an ass kicking like just it goes it's it's full on the it minute is, the minute man. we do it's like and nobody's slacking. It is, you know, man. it's like Great. there's no text, there's no this. It's like we're setting up our shit, we're breaking down our shit. We're just, really, yeah, yeah. Fucking, oh yeah, and everybody does it. And there's no, like I say, Team where nobody's effort. dragging their feet, and we're making it happen, and and it just, the shows kick ass, the songs kick ass, and it's just fun and it's rad, and everybody's all on the same page. That's why it works that way, you yeah. know. <clears throat> it's badass. I love it, you know. That's crazy. No practice, go smash it out. I mean, you know, it's like I say, if we can squeeze one in, that's awesome. But a couple times now, it's like we've had to just kind of, you know, I've come in from something, and you know, Joey's not there to make it, so we get, you know. Yeah, get the sound check and smash, work out a couple <laughs> songs, and you know, but I mean, you know, it's like it's work, it's work like everybody else. But yeah. we're lucky enough to be that we do play a lot. You yeah. know, the band does play a lot, so that yeah, helps. Are, that helps. So you going? You were jumping from one tour to another. Yeah, and the Bronx had a different drummer for a second because you jumped on the circle. Jerks, yeah, right? yeah. My friend Jared, wow, uh, he man. filled in for the last five. They were shows. crossing over each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is I hate, you know, because yeah. I want to be able to do them all, but. You know, well, but like I said, it'll, it's all going to work itself out. We're going to, you know, by the end of the Circle Jerks run, which I believe is uh, the beginning of fall next year, it'll be full time Bronx. But that tour, bro, seven seconds, my favorite bands with yeah. Circle Jerks, Negative Approach. It's going to be great. Dude, it's that's gonna be like great. a goose. That doesn't even look real to me. When I can't wait, it. man. I I've can't been texting wait. with Kevin. I'm asking about the set list because he knows that. He's my dude, but like that's like one you would see on like those old flyers. I know, you know yeah, they definitely from the old days. You and know it's what selling mean? so good. There's like extra nice. It's gonna be great. There, it's gonna be great, man. That's like a dream, dude. That's a dream, fucking. Yeah, I can't Souls wait. Souls are on a couple shows. Yeah, Bouncy Souls are on. I guess on the West Coast shows we're doing at the and end. Is that in March? May. Okay, that ends May. in May. It begins. The first leg starts in February. Wow. But the Bouncing Souls, I believe, are on the last couple. You know, in, uh, that's May. a long one. Well, yeah. It's different yeah. It's a step. But I'm going from the I. Split with the Bronx overseas January to February, and then I get back and we start up for I think a week or so later with the Jerks on that run. So wow, um, can we see who the drummer is for Seven Seconds? Allowed to say that? I don't know if people know that. I guess I'll tell. Wait, you. what's that? The drummer for Seven Seconds? Who it's going to be? I, I won't say it on here. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I'll tell you after. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of know. You know, yeah. Well, so he, he told me. Yeah, I can't wait. Dude, so sick. You better I'll, tell I'll, me. I'm, I'm sure, after the after uh. this, but you can go up Seven <laughs> Seconds probably, right? Yeah. 
We too. play, yeah, yeah. I've seen Seven Seconds a million times. I used to love Seven Seconds as a kid too. They were great. Do you have like you a know, top five or anything? Got, Inspirations? Uh, as far as bands or music, yeah, drummers yeah, or what? Any um, inspiration in your life. I don't like I'll to be do favorite drum, No favorite drummers? I mean, I have favorite drummers, yes, of course. But Maybe, I mean, mm. my top, you know, obviously are, you know, Chuck Biscuits, yeah. you know, Lucky, Lairs, my, you know, Spit. You know, from beers. Old school cats, man. I mean, just like, you know, I mean, but that's why you say, if I'm, I, I, that's why I don't like to do that yeah. because there's so many great players and so many great drummers. And there's like, that's like same with my West Coast drummers. You know, you yeah. Too. I, mean, I mean, I love Mac and I love Earl. Ooh, you know what I mean? Mac it's like, you know, Earl, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, um, Mac, he's one of my favorite, man. Yeah, Mac's the shit, dude. dude. You know, I saw Mac back at Fender's. Wow. With, with, uh, with the Mags back then. You Holy know? shit. That must be a crazy ass, scary show. Chrome Max at Fenders back great. in the day. It was great. Wow. Yeah, yeah um, Mackie's he play he's he reminds me of you. He can play all different styles. It's not just one style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate Fun Loving Criminals. Uh Charles and Eddie was on like mm-hmm. Arsenio Hall playing like <clears throat> some soul R and B. Just Max, everything yeah. is, you know what of I mean? Of course. He's a player, you know. Yeah. Um So it's hard to mention drummers, right? Yeah. I mean, I just I love so many I just love you know, like I say, that's why it, I could like you said, all the it could be old school, it could be new school, it could be yeah. it could be, you know, it rock it could be punk it could be, there's so many different things i just love music in a whole you know but there are but there are a lot of people who um like i say i can easily say uh molded kind of my whole thing and that would be like chuck and that would be chuck you know lucky and mm-hmm. um obviously john bonham it's like you know yeah. it's, i mean you know it's like uh i saw buddy rich as a kid at disneyland and it just blew my mind i met wow. him you know it's like um, so it's such a wide, such a wide range. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like, range. you know, it's like it's it's. Um, it, there's so many, you know. There's just Gonzo so from the Muppets. From the, the drummer from the Muppets. The Gonzo, okay. the <laughs> <laughs> from the Muppets, Yo, of course, was, dude. He was super spazzy. Yeah. He was fucking, killing. Um, um, it's hard, though. But right? yeah, you know, yeah. it's and like not I, one, not one band either or artist. Um, I X c- maybe for you. Well, not no. I wouldn't just. I see. I just can't narrow it mm, down. It's hard. It is hard, though. And, you know, if you and, and honestly, when the day comes that you come to my house and I interview for my you for my podcast, whenever that is, <laughs> I'll, you you just go through my records collection mm. and, and you'll know you'll yeah. know why because you know, my my, my wife always says that she's like. You got it's like there's so much stuff here. There's so it's so different. It's so you got some hip hop yeah. in there. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I saw NWA. I saw Eric B. Wow. Rock Kent. You know, it's like you saw NWA live. Yeah, damn the Celebrity Theater, Mero and Orange. Yeah, OG lineup. Wow, wow. That's saw PE with Griff. Rest of Griff. Dude. Saw Boogie Down when they were still Boogie Down. Wow. Oh yeah. Damn. I played drums in uh, in Lethal Weapon Ice T video, yo. Oh, that's right, you did. <laughs> yeah. <With Ice-T. laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sick. Oh yeah. I mean, but you not know, really no hip hop groups you played in, or just some projects. Maybe? I played drums on WC the Mad Circles. Uh, WC and, and a damn thing changed. A single. That's I played drums on that. Crazy. I didn't know that man. Yeah, I did some stuff with Aladdin back in the day with low profile, just some drums for him. Um, wow. Yeah. You like break beats and shit like yeah, that? Yeah. You know? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Dub C just fucking hit me with that. I can't believe I didn't fucking He's got find the illest grip walk ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, up in smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he's. Low profile, though. His first group. Okay. Him and Aladdin. That's the real dude. But Ice Teal, that's pretty sick, too, though. Yeah, Ice. It was like, it was. I mean, it was. LA was bomb spot back then yeah. for all that. It was yeah. like, suicidal. All that. NWA. Yeah. yeah. He probably suicide, suicide early OG. days. But those worlds just kind of like OG. Meshed, like Big the, time. In the yeah. sense, yeah, right? Same as New York. We talked about the other day. Yeah. I feel yeah. like those worlds just kind of like it's, respect for That's each other. how it was, man. It was like, you know, all those early shows, you know, especially with hip hop. There were so many kids that I knew from punk rock that were at those shows because it was yeah. it was new. Oh, really? You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, man. It was like, it it was just... It was something else to check out, yeah. you know, and that's the way, that's what, that's why for me, like I was saying earlier with punk, you know, going to shows and learning about, it opened the door to so, doors Other to things. so many different things, you know, it and it was like, yeah. it was like, you know, um, damn, NWA in minor threat, damn, that's oh, fucking insane, flag, I mean, you know, all the, he, all the singers probably, Drake. you saw all the singers? Who? For, yeah, uh, Rollins Black and Keith. Oh no, 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 no! I don't go. I don't go that far back. Okay, Never got okay. to see Keith with them, dude. Oh, no. so you didn't, you didn't see Keith? Oh, yeah. I love Keith with them, though. Keith He's, is. I mean, Keith is the OG, bro. The OG, he is, dude. You the know, OG. Keith, so I'd have the conversation. Like you love yeah. Rollins so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. I love Rollins too, I man. I love so Rollins. Though. I love. I love SOA. Ooh. You know, I love. Yeah, State of Love SOA. That was my. That was my jam as a kid. Okay, 
uh-huh. did. It was just like, you know. But Keith, I mean, you know, such it, ill from even in his sixties right now, bro. He's the illest. It's a, it's an, Dude. it's a really an honor for me to be up there with him you know and it's like how's he been doing it he's like 65 or something he's the he best he just goes off dude he's, he's the this, best it's in his body it's in his it's blood a, yeah, it's, it's in his, his blood. soul but he's and that's he another it. thing with Keith though Keith is a music lover he loves there's his the, the spectrum of what he listens yeah, to and what it. he loves it's so wide you know mm-hmm. and that's it's always you know it's been that you know and that's how I've always you know I've I was kind of you know just in that same thing I just like I, I loved you know punk and hardcore and also mm-hmm. but so many other you know genres of of music and stuff you know like it just it that's what opened all that up to me yeah that's yeah. what opened all that up to me you know it's, it's crazy like, for, i feel like it for a second when you get into punk and hardcore you're like this is all i like i skate i listen to punk and hardcore this is it nothing else matters fuck the mainstream fuck this fuck that you get in that mode for a second when you're a kid because it's you found something of that's course so incredible and it's yours it's yours but then I don't know. I don't know. Punk rock actually taught me to be more open mind, listen to other shit for some reason. I yeah. don't know why. I just started listening because, to Because, I mean, that's what, isn't that what punk The reggae all and the clash oh, and the bad yeah, brains. And would... then who's Bob Marley? And then you find all this other stuff. Like, it's so amazing, man. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, and, and I think that's, that you know, that's really what, at the end of the day, what matters, you know, is being open to something new. Yeah. You know? and, that, and that's pretty much your life story, man. From starting in wasted youth to where you're at now. It is, and I still try to live so by cool. that. You know, I still, still listen to and want to know and check out new and, bands. Yeah, you know, it's like it's it's important. You know, yeah. It's, and it has nothing to do with, you know. I know some people like to say, oh, it's it's important because you got to stay relevant. But it's like no, I think it has more to do with just knowing what's happening you know what totally. i mean because it's exciting it's exciting by the new young bands too as yeah well. man it's exciting to know like what moves you know uh, a young person these days you know yeah. and, I, and, I, and that's why you know i'm so stuck like people are like oh your kid's playing drums i'm like i don't even care if they do dude yeah. i just want to know <laughs> you know because like because that's easy for them the drums are here totally they got all that you yeah. know they, it's like i want to know what what really is going to be their passion and like what what they're going to be about you know yeah. and it's like you know, it's like that. That's what's important, you know. And that's what I'm stoked about, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I look forward to all that, you know, because it's like at the end of the day, I got three. Bo- I mean, I, I can start a band with all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> you you the old man, kids? dad. Are Come on, done? man. Are you done with kids? No, nah, I think we're, we're talking about one more. Wow. Yeah, we're talking four about one kids. More. That's incredible. Yeah, man. my wife's. Yeah, we're both kind of. We've been talking about it lately, and yeah, and then wow. you know, my kids are. You know, they're. You know. Amazingly, like I say, my wife's British, so the kids have dual citizenship, so you know. Cool. So they've already been back and forth to the UK um, a bunch of times, and you know, World I think, uh, yeah. So I, I, I honestly think though that that's where they're going to go to school, though. Okay. I think we're going to go back you know, for you know for them to get to kind of go to school. Why well, do you like it there? I love it there. I love it there. Too. I always have loved it there. You I know, it's there like um, I've always I have a lot of friends there, that's and cool. I, I just I love I love the whole vibe, you know, and it's I've always had. You know, I've always had a great time there, you know, so, so all, all three will go to school there. I think so. I think wow. right now that's what we're that's kind of what we're leaning on, you know, because my because my oldest who before in March, he he can start school in September. OK. At four. And okay. it's, re- you know, and that's what I would love because it's like otherwise they got to wait till they're five or six. It's like yeah. and and he's already a long way. It is. It's like it. it's it's. Because he's already he goes to school he goes to preschool now and he yeah. and he's he really excels he's great you know it's like and um we're like man you know it's like to stifle that for another year yeah you know it's like that's a big transition from where you live in now to go right to would it be London area or something yeah oh uh, outside well my, my wife is from Halifax just outside okay, of Leeds I know, I know that yeah so what we're thinking is we've been we've been kind of thinking about outside of Manchester it's so. nice in the countryside you say Manchester. Man. Yeah, gorgeous. yeah. You're going there too for your first time? Yeah. Oh, to see, nice. To see Liam Gallagher. Oh, oh of course. Band. I'm a big fan. Favorite band. Dude, come on. I I always have you played with them at all? Or uh, we did some festivals. Them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Festivals at Back Queens. Yeah. Is, that's his whole life, man. So yeah. great. Oasis. Uh, we, I, we, we went into Oasis uh, K Hole the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I was like, man, that's such a. I, I just wish they would get back together already. Oh, oh I mean, I, <laughs> you know? I beg of. I I'm beg sure Coachella of, <laughs> offers them every year or something. Somebody's got to be offering them money every year. Oh, yeah. They've been. Like, yeah, they've been good. Offered I, yeah. They keep turning it down, though. Yeah. They literally. Well, they can. Yeah. This guy just sold out at. What he sold like, at Wembley Stadium or something? No, uh, Nebworth uh, Park. Which Ooh, is like nice. 125000 Yeah. Just Nebworth one of the brothers. Nebworth, yeah. He's, he, sold, he sold It sold out quick that he added an extra, and then that sold out. 
Well, just so you know, my favorite band, Coldplay, they sold out five spots. Wow. I, did, we did, I played with Coldplay. What do you mean? Multiple times we played with them. Okay, I was going to say you played drums. Like, no, 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 no. But I, the drummer's great. I met the drummer a few times. He's a super cool dude. We used to kick it a lot. What band played with Coldplay? Queens and Eagles. Wow. And I did. Yeah, multiple, oh, really? I, yeah, we did a couple Christmas shows in America. With I know it was a bunch of weird bands that were on the Christmas stuff, but we did you know festivals overseas. Nice so, guys. So yeah, everybody was cool. Yeah. Wow. Know? Everybody was cool. So what's your what's your O eight like? I have Oasis. His is Coldplay. What's your? <laughs> you ever pop? My big like, Brit pop band is what you're asking. Oh, <laughs> or else. just like somebody some surprises something, surprise us something that would like. surprise people. Um, who would that be? Man, somebody I, like Joey likes that. Like no, I mean. Uh, I saw the Smiths. Okay. And I was a big Smiths fan. Okay, I was okay. Kid, big yeah. time. Okay. You know? Um, but I think, one. I mean, I love the Smiths. I, I always have, you know? Yeah. It's like the yeah. same thing. But I mean, I, but if, if I had, it's like out of all those bands, like in particular that you're talking about, I love Oasis, man. Okay. Yeah. You know? Great yeah, I do. <clears throat> yeah. Great. And they're cool. Yeah. They're cool, man. They got, they still got that attitude. They have a punk, they have a punk, <laughs> a, punk oh, vibe to them. Time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's cool. You're going to Manchester. I yeah. love the specials, OG Ooh, specials. specials. I was a special, huge huh? specials fan when I was a kid, dude. Yeah, yeah love specials, specials man. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, man. This has been all. You have any questions? Oh, uh, thank no, you. This, dude. Is, this is amazing. You have no nerd questions for him? Yeah, I was Come doing. on, man. It, you're it, deep dive. Flowing. You're deep? Spit it, spit it. Come yeah. on. You're, 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 you're deep dive lacy. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know you one. got one. I have one. I have one. Go ahead. What is, uh, what was your favorite Queens of the Stone Age song to play? Oh, that's a nice one. To play, that's a real nerd shit. I love it. Yeah. To play. And I wonder if I'm guessing the same thing. I hope I am. But go you ahead. should write it down if he's favorite. But... Um. Well, okay. That I I <laughs> Misfit Love is always a great one to okay, play. Okay, you know I yeah. love that one. Um. <laughs> obviously, Dead is always a great one to uh-huh. play. Um. I, I could. Okay. I'll, what I'll do is I'll say from each era. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because that because that because there is because I really yeah. do because because there is like a lot of it. So yeah. from the first record. Um, uh, my favorite. It would probably be Mexicola. Okay, I love Mexicola. It still, like, still fit. Um, let's see. From R, uh, headache. Ooh, I think I lost my headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Headache. That's a fun one. Yeah, I've, I've I've seen one of your performances. You beat the fuck out of drums for that one. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I always loved that. Uh, what else is there? Uh, so we're deaf? on. Uh, so, oh, yeah, said deaf. 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 Yeah. yeah, dad. I would. Say, you know, songs for the deaf itself was. A yeah, great, I used to love to play that. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, lullabies. I would have to say. Um, hmm. Lullabies. Maybe someone's in the wolf. Maybe. Oh, okay. Is that <laughs> yeah. deep cut? Yeah. Kind of a deep cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. My favorite uh, to hear you play off that album is Medication. Oh, yeah. See, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, Medication is one of yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real kind of like, yeah. kind of, it's kind of wiry, <laughs> kind of punk. You know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then I think after that would be Arrow, right? So yeah, I think, yeah, kind of like Misfit Love is rad. That was fun. Um, and then I guess off like clockwork. I don't know. I don't even know the titles off like. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the working titles ended up being. It's like that or, CD they gave you. Well, I only knew yeah, the working yeah. titles, so you know what I mean. Okay. So, so I, I, you know, it's sat by the ocean. It's so, oh, sat by the ocean. Yeah, because it it's was to me that was a very old school Queens vibe. Yeah, you know what I mean when song. we did that. Yeah, it is dope. It's sick ass groove. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure all the Circle Jerk songs are fun to play. Every Circle Jerk yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like your childhood. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, all the Circle Jerk songs, all the Bronx songs. I love playing. Yeah. It's just yeah. like you know, and you know, all the early Danzig stuff was a blast to play. Oh yeah, any blast stuff is rad to play. I love it too. And um, was Mother like magical to play that during that time because it was so big? No, for me, no. I could give a shit about it because okay. there's so <laughs> many. There's so many other great Danzig songs. Oh, you know what I'm is. saying? It's like it's there like, is. and he just you know that era. Of dancing, is, yeah. It's like, like I'm gonna play this again. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's it's, but it, but I, you know what's Banger. great though is I love hearing it on the radio to this day. Every time I hear Mother, I'm like, man, what? It's like he's such. That's why I say Glenn. I love Glenn so much, Voice dude. It's like amazing. he's so he's he he just he's done it and everything. He's every little again. He's reinvented himself over and he over has, in so many different ways. But yet he always he always stays true to who he is and what, yeah. you know, what he's about for the most, you know, but he's mm-hmm. still Glenn. He's still Glenn. Dan- you still go, Oh yeah, that's Glenn. Yeah. You know? So, but yeah. So even with the Elvis stuff, I played, I played on fever on his Elvis record tribute, you know? So wow. that was cool. You know, I was like, when he called me and he told me, he asked me if I, I was like, Oh, I was so psyched to know that he was doing that. You know, uh-huh. 
So, <laughs> but yeah, all those bands, I love them all, dude. And you yeah. did a song on Twin Peaks, a Nine Inch Nails song. Yeah, I did the I did the video for that. That's yeah, amazing. Man. Yeah, it was fun. It it's was a great so show, dope. He called me and I was like, really? the Nine Inch Nails or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was for um, that the, the 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 last version of the series, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was, Tim Armstrong was on one of those episodes too. Was Tim on it too? Yeah, he was on. He was on that show. Yeah, a couple years ago. Oh, oh yeah, wow. he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. I love working with Tim too. He's he's the shit. That's right. You guys jam all the time. He's, yeah. he's the best. Yeah, he's one of my favorite artists, writers, yeah. he's, humans. He, he's the man, bro. I love him. You know, and, and we have a we have a great time together. All so it's like it's, it's always a good time. You know. And then, did you create the LP jam block? That was my jam. Yeah. Okay. That was what I ch- I used. Uh, you know about the LP jam block? Well, well, what it was is it, it yeah, I used it for <laughs> Little Sister, the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and and I uh, and I and uh, oh the the little red block, yeah, the, the little, little red jam block. And that became like your kind of thing, dude. It was like I did a, I did an LP pack for that. You see that? Wow. Yeah. And then we when we did it on Saturday Night Live with Will Ferrell, it was hilarious, dude. He wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing, man. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, yeah. Fuck man, thank you for your journey. Man, we talked this year. Dude, this, this is amazing. Yeah, we covered. Let me check all my notes. We covered so many things. Yeah, I hopefully, really hopefully it. it all makes some sense. It does make no, sense. It does. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> dude, it my shit just flows right. like that. I love it. I do so many of these. That, yeah, <laughs> we did one yesterday with yeah, yeah, man. Fuck man, so many. Dude, thank you so much. We yeah. talked about doing this for such a long Thanks time. Thanks for having me, man. It's I appreciate everything great you put to be here into with the both world. You guys, man. Your, your music, everything you put out into the world, and thank you, man. I look forward to family. Uh, yeah, thank you. You as well, and it's been great doing it. And I just listened to Walters the other day. It was so oh, cool. Shit. Nice, yeah, yeah. So that was Shrifles, cool. dude. Ah, uh, yeah, he's awesome. You see, I, I, see how I asked him about that one song, sound like the other song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of recycled. It was cool though. I thought that yeah. was genius, dude. Yeah, well, what a great band. Walters, that quick, guy. Man. Yeah, he's such a great songwriter. You know, I know, man. That's what I told him. He was like my. West Coast, my East Coast version of Tim Armstrong, like two of my favorite yeah. different genres, but they yeah. like amazing songs. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Quicksand, woo, man. Yeah, I mean, still doing it too. That's what's great. Yeah, you all good, Chappelle? You, all, you got good. You feel you're good with yeah, all your no, stuff? You guys, you it's been awesome. Thank you so yeah. much, brother. Absolutely. Thank you. Peace. Yo, Circle Jerks, Wild in the Streets' 40th year anniversary of their vinyl has been re released on Trust Records. It's remastered, it has bonus tracks, it has a 20-page booklet. You can catch Surfer Jerks on tour right now. Shout out to my man, Joey C. If you go to TrustRecordsCompany.com, you can get tickets, you can get merch, you can get vinyl. And use my code, TRUSTLIFE, all caps, T-R-U-S-T-L-I-F-E, and get 20% off. Make sure you cop that 7 Seconds merch and that remaster of the crew and my favorite albums. Also, they're on Instagram, Trust underscore Records underscore Company. I love you, Trust Records. Thank you for preserving and making all the music I love available for years and years and years and bringing it back for all the new kids and new generation. Love y'all. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, Please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to hear the next one.